look forward to, you know. Um, time right. Timeline, again, might be subject to change. Just realised uh, we may have been muted for the first couple of minutes there. Sorry, because I didn't realise the mic was off. Um, no apologies. So apologies there, guys, if you just saw us <laughs> talking without any kind of um, volume at all. Um, and uh, yeah, I would have looked a bit crazy if it was a bit like like, <laughs> like a mime act that me and Rob are doing. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, welcome to the session. <laughs> That's and, the ultimate test. Week twelve, you don't get any audio. You've just got to lip read. You've just got to lip read and put the pieces together yourself. So yeah, good. Well, just as well that I noticed that just there before we get into, yeah. into the session. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so as you were saying, Rob, just about the, the roadmap that we're kind of laid out now. Yeah, yeah, we've got a little bit of a roadmap, you know. So even just having an idea of of, of how things might look going forward can make a big change um, for our own sort of psyche, our own mental state. You know, because like I say, we're all in different circumstances and different situations. Some people are coping better than others. Um, so, you know, like I say, we're, we're well, coming up to the end of February already. You know, we're coming up to the end of February. Spring's on the way. Summer's on the way. And, 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 and like I say, subject to change. But at least we've got some kind of, like I say, we've just wrote, wrote map to sort yeah. of look, look, look to now as well. Go for it. You know, um. Okay, right, so just in case the audio was muted at the start, we're just going to have a little bit of a recap today, sort of run through everything from the last 11 weeks or so, make sure that we're all sorted in terms of uh, posters, presentations, and getting those sorted, um, even in like a one-to-one -one Zoom sort of setting. And yeah, just sort of, just sort of ticking boxes, tidying things up today, and uh, we're going to have a little bit of a recap on um, just the healthy eating side of things as well, um, and, and of course give you guys a chance to ask any questions. Uh, because, like I say, at the minute, exercise is a little bit harder to control than our food, I think. Yeah. You know, because of the circumstances that we're in, it, you've sometimes got to be a little bit more strict with your diet and not have as much sort of freedom when you can't put the extra exercise in, you know, and maybe he's making them sacrifices and, and, and burn that off, you know. Um, we're maybe limited once outside the house a day for exercise um, and, and, and potentially just body weight training in the house, you know, yeah. be it yoga, be it your sort of um, high intensity interval training and stuff like that. You know, um, we haven't got quite as many sort of resources available at the minute when it comes to fitness. So if we can just learn to tweak our food a little bit more and control our food a little bit more. And that can sort of give us a good place to, or a better place to come out of lockdown in, you know, whenever, whenever that is going to be, um, you know, it, it's a case of coming out in the best position possible and building from there. You know, a lot of what we've talked about the last few weeks, we've mentioned trying to get stuff in place for when sort of a little bit of normality comes back, you know, can you be following certain pages online? Can you sign up to email and um, like, like, like groups and stuff like that so they can let you know when they're reopening and their procedures, yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's never been maybe a better time to start thinking about, that moving forward you know especially you know as spring's coming around summer's coming around you might be able to get out walking and running if yeah. you are still a little bit more conscious about you know going back to the swimming baths back to the gym or whatever it's going to be and um, because of course everybody's going to do that in their own time as well you know it's not anything that we can force and people feel comfortable when they feel comfortable you know and it, it, it's 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 a course on the sort of establishment or, or the company to make their customers feel uh, comfortable you know, so yeah, if you can just sort of have an eight to the ground and find out what's going on out there, you can say to yourself, um, example I used a couple of weeks ago, you know, if you really enjoy your swimming and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I do want to get back to swimming when, when that's sort of available, um, but you're like, oh, I've maybe he's lost weight or put a little bit of weight on through lockdown, you're swimming because he doesn't fit. Um, don't wait until things reopen again and you're ready to go and then go, oh, I need to pull out 10, 10 15 quid for swimming because he um, because that obviously doesn't fit everybody's budget. It could be yeah. a case of you could think ahead now and try and just put two pounds aside, just put two 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 pounds aside a week, maybe even. And then by the time that comes around, you're like, okay, I can get I can get myself a new towel. I can get myself like a new swimming cosy. Um, it pays for me first x amount of swims that I go down and do on my first membership, wherever it might be. Um, so it, like I say, it's a really good chance to just start doing a little bit of research, um, and 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 putting something together and a plan for sort of post post lockdown um but of course if you've got any questions about that as always reach out give me a shout and, and and i'm happy to help with stuff like that as well um okay so like i say just a little bit of a recap today um so last week we were looking at um researching and putting together your own sort of um fitness class your own unique fitness class so if we can just spin on to the next slide please buddy yeah of course man yeah cool cheers man 
Um, so, so yeah, we were looking at knocking up our own um, sort of unique fitness program. You know, it's got a, we, we, we're trying to find its own selling point. Who does it appeal to? Does it remove any barriers towards exercise that a lot of people sort of um, encounter? And sort of just, just pulling ideas for that together. You know, you're going to go away, do a little bit of research, put some stuff in place. Um, and then, of course, the plan is, like I say, probably going to be the last thing we do to get you finished up on this course. We'll just be um, <clears throat> organising a one-on-one Zoom call with myself and, and we'll just run through that. I can give you a bit of feedback and get that boxed off as well. So, yeah, all good. So, yeah, definitely. Let me let me know how you're getting on with uh, with that. And again, if you need any help, please do let me know. Um, today, like I say, a little bit of a recap and a little bit of looking into sort of the healthy eating side of things. Um, so if we can spin on a couple of slides, please, bud. Cosmo. And then, of course, you you guys will probably be sick of looking at these workbooks by now. So rather than Daniel pulling them up, I've just bullet pointed sort of what we've been through in each workbook. Um, so we're looking for the um, how the body works um, slide there. Yep. Yeah, one spot on, nice one, cool. Um, cool. So, like I say, we 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 looked at the skeleton, you no know, um, proper scientific names and, and 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 proper sort of names for bones, um, and and sort of how they work as well. How do they fit together? How do they move? Uh, and I guess most importantly, how do we look after them? You know, um, your bones, your skeleton. If it takes a lot longer for a bone to repair than it does a muscle. You know, if, you, if you've if you got a sprain or, or you've tweaked a muscle or something like that, you'd probably argue that it's it's easier to sort of live around that and, and, and certainly let that repair than it is, of course, a broken leg or a broken ankle or something like that. I'm sure Daniel will tell you that himself. Um, oh, dude. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here. But um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's one of them things that sort of, I think because when it comes to fitness, a lot of the focus is on sort of the mus- muscular side of things. Yeah. You know, um, do you know what I mean? There's no skeleton day at the gym. You can't, you can't, you can't flex your, can't flex your humerus in the mirror. You know, it, 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 it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look good on your selfies and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people focus so much on the sort of the, the aesthetic side of, side of fitness. Um, and rather than thinking about it in more like a holistic sort of approach, you know, it's, 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 it's everything, you know, um, and that booklet that we looked at that you guys have probably completed by now, you know, looking at the skeleton, the heart, the lungs, um, a little bit on the healthy diet as well. Um, you know, it just sort of ties all of that together. We can see how the muscular system works with the skeletal system um, to sort of do what it's got to do, you know, what, what, what we've talked about, the protection, movement, support, all of that sort of thing. Um because it's it's like I say, it's really easy to, to neglect the stuff that we don't see. Um, I, I find def, definitely. So yeah, we worked through. If I can just pull that up on my end, sure. um, how how the body works. So Rob, we did. Yeah. I was just gonna say that where you reminded me of something that quite interesting. Not just go too off topic, but when you were saying about like working a, how you can't really work out a bone, can you? And obviously that's a hundred percent true. Um, something quite interesting that I seen though is that. Uh, something that the, that the Thai boxers do. I don't know if you've ever seen a uh, kickboxer, the um, Jean-Claude Van Damme film, where he's kicking the tree. And you oh, might okay, have seen no. other like kind of Thai boxers or something do that, or kickboxers. And um, basically, like they kick kind of hard objects, like since when they're young. And basically it kind of, it, it looked like it was nonsense, but I saw like a sports science thing on it. And there's actually like mm-hmm. science behind it. And what it does is, um, it's obviously not recommended and it probably can mess your leg up for like a lot of people but mm-hmm. uh, it like causes like loads of micro fra- fractures in the skin and if you know uh, with like Thai box and MMA leg kicks are a huge part of it and like mm-hmm. kicking someone in the leg and getting hit in the leg and uh, these micro fractures start to like heal and basically what they do is it like, calcifies over the bone and it makes the bone extra strong Really? So when you see them hit these, like hit like a tree or hit like a like a really hard object, it's like yeah. that. It's like the bones start to harden from years from all of that training. Um, wow. So that's how they can take such like leg kicks and give them back without like yeah. actually like sustaining too much damage. Oh, that's really interesting because now you mention it, I think all of the sort of certainly the leg break injuries that I've seen within combat sports and stuff like that, it's so often come from a kick. 
And yeah. as that leg goes to plant again, that leg buckles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, so I, 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 I can, I can really see sort of like the benefit of that. And and you know, I know, I know that we're saying that there is no sort of way to train your skeleton to be stronger. Really, mm-hmm. um, it's kind of worth mentioning though that that resistance training, the resistance training that we do go on about, is really good at helping just with bone density against osteoporosis and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, what you see really often is people neglecting that side of training for other payoffs you know but that might be someone running on the treadmill for an hour just because they want a little bit more cardiovascular fitness and their brain their knees their ankles their hips like like just pounding impact with every single step yeah when that might be nothing to do with why they're training you know they might they they might not be training for a marathon the great north run any any anything like that so again being being smart with your training Mm -hmm. um you, you know, uh, that's, that's why I always used to push resistance training to everybody. You know, you, you would have women come through the front door. I don't want to do any weights. I don't want to end up like Arnie. You'd be like, no, no, it's, it's, like, it, 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 it's all right. You won't trust us. Trust us, but you'll be, you'll be better for it in the long run. You know, yeah. I mentioned Hatham yesterday. Actually, I used to train one woman who all she came to the gym for was to deal with um, early onset, like um, osteoporosis. Wow, yeah. So Brilliant. she wasn't. She wasn't training for, um, like I say, she wasn't training for uh, like a um, physical condition competition. Mm-hmm. You know, there was no strength, there was no performance or, or like or anything like that. She wasn't worrying about, like, do you know what I mean? She was early 60s, so she's not thinking about putting a bikini on when she goes away with the girls like that, like that sort of thing. Like that's just not that's a non-issue. Yeah. You know, and and you know, other other trainers would say to me like, Rob, why why don't you? I get into her a little bit more about her diet and stuff like that. And she's enjoying these treats. Said, she's 60. Let her enjoy the treats. Do you know course, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, she's, she, she tells me what she wants to train for. I can mm-hmm. give her advice. Um, but at the same time, I, I perfectly agree with it. You know, um, she enjoyed um, just, just for example, she enjoyed like a bit of lamb on a Sunday dinner rather than chicken. Just, and, yeah. and, 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 and you know what I mean? In certain fitness circles, it'd be like, Oh, why aren't you having chicken? You know, mm-hmm. it's like, chicken's a lot leaner there's less fat content um like i say at the end of the day she wasn't training training to lose weight necessarily she was just training for bone density and, and, and for longevity you know so it, it is really really easy to get swept up in what other people tell you you should be doing and, yeah. and 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 getting swept up in other people's training routines and eating plans and stuff like that but you've got to do what works for you at the end of the day you know um and 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 of course we're here to guide as sort of like fitness professionals and stuff like that but at the end of the day, it's 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 ultimately up to you, you know. But um, that was a really good point about the kickboxers, buddy. I, I'd I'd never even, I'd never heard of that. Yeah, just uh, go quickly going off what you were saying as well there about how you yeah. see that injury a lot of the time, um, in, in like kind of combat sports, and that and that's also like really true. And I think that uh, even in McGregor's last fight, that's how he lost really because he's he, uh, player took his leg out. Um, and he hit him in the calf, and, and that's a new thing you see in a lot of is like okay. calf, calf kicks and. What Poirier said, the reason that he targeted the calf is because when you get hit there, a lot of times if you get hit somewhere, the swelling will kind of like the blood will spread throughout the body. So it'll swell, but it won't swell up to like a crazy point because it'll like, you know, like there's there's room for it to move the blood to move around the body. But he says that it kind of like compartmentalizes if you get hit in the calf, there's nowhere Mm -hmm. for it to go. So it just swells up so much. So they're saying that that's why the calf is such like a weak area for people. Right, it's so it's sort of like try and try and contain it to the calf as much as it can, and yeah, then just yeah. kind of shut down at the same time. Yeah, and it can really cause problems for them. Um, oh, okay, because I mean, any any kind of combat sport, you, your feet, your tool, isn't it? At the end of the day, if you can't move your feet and get out of the way, you're gonna exactly. you, yeah, you're gonna know about it. You really so are. So it's where the power. They say the power and punching comes from the legs, doesn't it? So it's like if you can't move your legs, then that's it. You you you're in a bad place. <clears throat> this is why we do legs day, buddy, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> Definitely. Um, okay, so I've just got that um, How the Body Works booklet up in front of us. I'm just making sure that we haven't missed anything as we're sort of going through that. Um, I know we did a week on the heart. Mm. Now, that probably feels a lifetime ago now um, in the sense that I think that was week two. So, you, so you're talking like like the thick end of three months. Um, I think that was last year, actually, we covered wow. the heart. <laughs> um, yeah, back in the last year in December. So, again, um, I've, I've mentioned this morning as I've sent out emails with workbooks and, 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 and stuff like that. With today wrapping the course up, I'll just put everything into one place, all the workbooks, all the sessions, all the surveys, and I'll just send them out all in one go. So it's all in one place. You can go back. You can watch the videos again. You know, um, you can recap on any bits that you might have missed. Um, 
and like I say, your workbooks will be there as well if there's any that you um, are, are missing. You know, hopefully not by this point, but if there's any that I've gone walk about so you just can't find where you've put one, uh, let, let, let me know and I'll, I'll send one over. Um, other than that, you know, we've got the skeleton, we've got the heart. Um, we did look at the lungs and, and, and a little bit of the cardiovascular system as well, you know, um, how the oxygen comes in and gets to the part where the heart can come in and take over and, and, and sort of do what it needs to do, you know. Um, if you remember, we, 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 we knocked up a little diagram actually during that session as we were working our way through, um, especially on the heart side of things, you know, just tracking the flow of the blood around the body. Um, that might have stuck, you know, and yeah. that might just be something that you want to go back and refresh. Truth be told, I find that's something that I need to go back and read over just from time to time because there's, there's a lot of words in there that you're not going to use anywhere else, you know. Um, and, 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 of course, just to sort of re, re, refresh in your mind and just so you can sort of visualise the way that the heart works. Mm-hmm. and does what it needs to do yeah and then the last little bit of that booklet was just looking at mainly um nutrients vitamins and our and our macronutrients as well you know which is of course our proteins our fats our carbs and the jobs that they do in the diet you know because diet is as much as diet is probably harder to nail on and sift through and figure out good information than it is with exercise you know with, with, with exercise it's very much uh trial and error, see what works for you sort of thing. Diet is something that's, and research on diet is changing all the time. You know, um, the, like the, the, the nutritional community and, and, and scientists and stuff like that are always doing new studies. There's always new sort of stuff coming out that's always evolving. So you find this even, even sometimes a little bit tougher to sort of stay in the know and, and, and up to date. But at the end of the day, our carbs are always going to serve the same function. Our fats are always going to do the same thing. And so are proteins. Um, it, it has been the case for, to my knowledge, as, as long as we've walked the earth, you know. Um, and, and, of course, it's, 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 it's not just us. Um, it, it, it applies across any, any species, any, any living things, you know. Um, those functions are nailed on. So you can have a you can start to have a little bit of a thinking and 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 really think about your timings. I think once you've understood what each part of your food does, you know it'll be a case of okay, you realise carbohydrates going to turn into sugars, give me a load of energy. Do you need them nine ten o'clock at night? <laughs> you know, prob- probably not, probably not. But then you might think to yourself, okay, maybe I do want those nine ten o'clock at night um, for whatever reason. You know, I might just be I, I fancy a little bit of a treat. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and I, I feel like I've earned a little bit of a treat. And then it's having the knowledge to sort of fit that into your diet as well. You know, do you take um, some carbs or calories from earlier in the day and save them? Do you take some from the next day? Or do you get up the next morning and try and do something quite high intensity that's going to burn those carbohydrates off? You know, so it's not as, it's not as restrictive as you might think. And, and, and I think that that's, that's something that I think a lot of people are scared of when it comes to nutrition. Um, they feel like it's very black or white. It's very set in stone. You're either on the wagon or you're off the wagon. You know, you're either eating uh, chicken salad all day, every day, or, you know, it's, it's a free for all. I'm just going to eat whatever I want, you know. Um, it, it can feel kind of restrictive. And that's that's where I've always tried to just preach this sort of flexible approach, you know. Um, I, I absolutely love that as well, Robin. I, I think that's yeah, so cool. Yeah. There's this guy I, f- I follow on Instagram. I can't remember his name, but uh, he's an English guy, and he he kind of he's kind of similar. And uh, he it's like just a no BS kind of approach to it, where it's like you know there's all these different kind of diets and stuff, but ultimately it comes down to like you know calories in versus calories out, right? And just if you calorie if, deficit, if, if, yeah, yeah. If you're looking for weight loss, and um, yeah, so it, it's interesting, you know, because. You know, we mentioned about fad diets and stuff before, you know, it's like something like keto or something. And it's like, f- from my understanding, it's like, yeah, that kind of stuff would work, but like, it's not necessarily, you know, it's, it, 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 it you could also have that by just having, you know, like reducing what you normally eat and, and, and building a healthy diet. You don't have to like could completely cut carbs out or completely cut whatever out. You can make yeah. it, you know, adjust your current diet to make it healthier, right? Or, yeah, yeah. And that makes it loads more sustainable as well, because you're not taking like a diet and a lifestyle and flipping it on its head and trying to just hope that it sticks for a couple of weeks until it maybe becomes a little bit of a habit, you know? The way I've always worked with everybody would be, right, let's take your diet that you're on now and gradually tweak it in the direction that we want to take it. Because if I just pick you up and put you at the finish line, like I say, you, you, you'll, be, you'll be absolutely sick of it because you've given yourself no time to adapt, you know, and get used to certain changes. 
especially when it comes to carbohydrates, because if, if, you, if you drastically cut your carbohydrate intake, and especially if you're used to a lot of carbohydrates, um, you can sometimes get what we call like sort of um, like carbohydrate, like, like that flu. It's almost like flu symptoms. You feel so run down and so knackered because um, your body's um, not getting enough of or as, as much of. It probably is getting enough. On a basic level, it's just not getting as much as it might be used to. Because um, I feel like it's easy to pad a meal out with carbs, isn't it? It's like, oh, I'll chuck some more rice in there. I'll have a little bit more pasta, uh, the potatoes, stuff like that. And they're more, usually they're more cost effective as well. You know, you go out, you buy a big bag of rice for like three quid that's going to last you half a year. Um, or you can go out and get like a little pot of chicken breast that's like £3.50. Yeah. You, you know, so naturally the instinct is to pad meals out um, with those carbohydrates and stuff like that. Um, of course, we had a week where we looked at body type as well. Um, today's probably a, a good chance to sort of link those in together. You know, whereas someone <clears throat> that, we, that we would class as an ectomorph can get away with a really high carbohydrate diet because um, they're they've got maybe a faster metabolism and they're quite thyroid dominant. Um, whereas someone who is an endomorph, maybe it's the other end of the other end of the spectrum, you know, maybe they need a higher protein content because it's really sort of, it's lean, you know, and, and a lean protein, um, as opposed to loads of carbs and loads of fats because those body types naturally just just want to store it mm -hmm. you know they, they just they just want to store that fat um so that's something to think about as well you know if you've got someone who's a totally different build to you saying oh i'm i'm, I'm eating this i'm trying this diet you know consider your own body type maybe it might not be ideal for yourself yeah. you know um but exactly like you were saying a minute ago buddy you know all of those diets you know your keto your atkins your weight watchers your slimming world <clears throat> All of them work on one main principle, and it's a calorie deficit. Yeah. You know, like you say, it's calories in versus calories out. It's being in a healthy calorie deficit as well, you know, making sure that you're not, that you're getting maybe 90% of the calories that you need and gradually coming down rather than giving yourself 50% of the calories that you need. And your body just goes, oh, I don't like it. What's going on? Um, and sometimes actually goes into sort of like a little bit more of a fat and, and certainly water retention sort of mode. Yeah. You know, because I've always thought about it as when you're trying to um, convince your body to let go of fat, you're effectively trying to teach your, your body to let go of its nest egg. Yeah. You know, that is its rainy day fund. That is if food dries up and there's no more food, I've got my bank account here and this is what I go to. You've got to convince your body to be comfortable enough to let some of that out, knowing that there's going to be plenty coming back as well. It's a really you good know? way of looking at it, actually. That's, that's the way I think about it, you know. Um, and you've, you've got to work with your body mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and do it in a healthy way that your body's going to say, okay, like, I'm, I'm okay with the idea of spending some of this because I know that there's no drought coming anytime soon, mm -hmm. you know, which is why sometimes it can take a couple of weeks before it starts to take effect as well. Another kind of um, analogy that, that I thought was like, a, it's, it's really similar to what you're saying was cool is so talking about like skills and, and, and confidence. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they said that like, you know, if you've got a lot of skills in something, but you don't have any self-confidence. It's like having, um, it's like having like, you know, being a millionaire, but not having like the, the pin to the bank. Right. So it's like, and yeah. I thought that was so interesting. It really is. So yeah, yeah it's like, I, I love that. I was like, oh, yeah, man. I like that one. I'll have, yeah, I'll have yeah. to use that one. Yeah. Yeah. And then the frustrating that you're in control of giving yourself the pin as well. Yeah, exactly. And it, you know, um, that, that's a really good one. I'll have to use that one, but, but yeah, like, like, like Daniel was saying, uh, you know, it, it is, it is a case of just watching calories in versus calories out from a weight loss point of view, you know, just before we move on to the next booklet, it probably is worth mentioning that, of course, healthy eating and eating for weight loss or weight gain are two different things entirely, you know. Um, I've had people come up to me in the gym, oh, Rob, I'm, I'm eating clean so I can lose some weight. And like, yeah, they're not maybe getting takeaways, they're not eating some of the naughty stuff that they were, but they're having hand, hands full of nuts, you know, which can be quite calorific because they're quite high in fats. They're good fats that your body needs, but you've still got to be aware of the calorie content in them as well, you know? Yeah. Because um, you can be chucking all these good calories in, you know, um, you're still going to get to the point where you've hit the point where you won't lose any weight and then you're going to start creeping up into weight gain territory, you know? Um, again, um, handfuls of nuts, people eating, eating, eating salad, for dinner every day, but lashing on a load of like sauce on the top, um, just to give it a little bit of flavour. 
which is again adding adding calories. So just because you're eating clean and you've taken out a lot of processed stuff, um, I mean, there's the health benefits uh, other than weight loss and weight gain because, of course, it's not all about weight loss and weight gain. Um, but of course, that is just something to think about as well. You know, um, of course, we've looked at it from the other side as well. People trying to gain muscle mass will sometimes do what we call a dirty bulk where they just eat all, the, all the calories that they can. And yeah, I tell you what, mate, it works for weight gain. Yeah. But you feel awful, oh, don't feel you? You feel awful. absolutely My dreadful. Heart, on it. Heartburn all the time because yeah. it was just from all the crap that I was eating. It's like yeah. constant heartburn. Yeah. And like my stomach was like huge out here. And I probably, I did, my lifts went up. They actually did of go course. up. They will. Like I, I, I look terrible physically and I felt terrible. But mm-hmm. uh, um, yeah, but I definitely got stronger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so, so in a, in a sense, you know, it, it can work, it, it can, it can do what you want it to. Um, but you know, it is that weighing it up is, is it worth not feeling optimal? Cause I've always, I've always sort of thought that feeling optimal and those feeling comfortable in your own skin, having more energy day to day, you know, uh, like I say, a little bit more confidence in yourself and your own abilities is much more important and should be a higher priority to work on than, your weight on a scale mm-hmm. you know, that shouldn't necessarily dictate everything that you do and now you might be in a position where you've been told you've got to lose x amount of weight to go in for an operation that's a different story altogether then you have got to prioritize your weight loss in 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 that sort of sense but again that's in the name of optimal health and and, and treating that underlying condition that needs dealing with you know if you're not in that position doing anything for weight loss or weight gain at the at the expense of your own sort of well-being and your own health uh, it's just not worth it because sooner or later you've got to deal with that um, and you're in the position where you're maybe trying to hold on to your hard-earned gains at that point as well, you know, where you're like, oh, I've dirty bulked, I've put I've put a stone on or whatever it is. Um, now I've got to sort my health out, but I don't want to lose those gains as well. I want to maintain that lean muscle that yeah. I've put on, which is, which is a lot harder to do. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you can get yourself feeling optimal and healthy first, then you can work on the other side of things as well. You know, so that that's always where I would start. You know, your vitamins, uh, your, your nutrients, your minerals, that sort of thing. Um, before you worry about the strict weight loss or weight gain sort of things as well. You know, because at the end of the day, it's about more than how much you weigh, um, which is your relationship with gravity. At the end of the day, you know, that's the way I always put it. Um, I don't like to really push the importance of of, of physical weight. You know, because um, I've I've been around people that are heavier than me and, and fitter than me at the same time yeah. you know um it's by no means a indication of your worth or your value or anything like that so it shouldn't necessarily be the first place that you start um but of course we're all different and again if, if you're if you're thinking a little bit oh that's got us thinking i don't know where to start now rob you've thrown us a curveball um again drop me an email drop me an email i'm, I'm always happy to help and, and give a little bit of uh, guidance with stuff like that yeah and uh, the, 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 I remember there's a uh, UFC fighter. I think he's just just retired, but he's called Daniel Cormier, and uh, he's a world class athlete. And he was a two, he was a champion at heavyweight and light heavyweight. And uh, if you look at him, right, he's got like a big gut, and he's like a bigger set guy, and he's a world class athlete. And he can go like you know five rounds, five minutes, uh, easy. And like so, that's it. It's uh, going off what you're saying about body types. It's you know. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, even 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 somebody somebody like Tyson Fury, yeah, exactly. you know, in, in in terms of his conditioning, yeah, like you send him out there to run a mile, he's not going to run a mile. He's 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 going to have a harder time, but he's he'll be conditioned to however long the rounds are, however many rounds he's used to fighting, um, and and he'll he'll just be he'll just be used to that. I read something really interesting the other week, actually, buddy. I'm glad you're on, um, Steph Steph Curry, Steph yeah. Curry yeah. plays for the Warriors now. What they've done. They've put something in place, and I'm going to have to look a little bit more in in depth into it. They've found a way to condition Steph Curry to get his heart rate back to normal in the duration of a timeout, which wow. might be 20 seconds. It's something to do with sandbags and weight around his abdomen. Actually, do you something. see him? Do you see him doing it in the in the in the timeouts? Or does it? Do it I, you know, I haven't it, seen any, but I don't know if it just goes on sort of um, in training, in yeah, scrimmages, yeah. St- st- stuff like that. I've never seen it done, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um, that's so interesting. It, it it was amazing though. Like 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 I say, to be able to just get back down in that right band, resting heart rate in 20, 30 seconds just from training and that conditioning. 
Um, because it's getting your body used to what it does day in, day out, and the boxing would be no different with Tyson Fury. You know, I'd get in the ring with him, and and I'm probably what a third of his weight, and he dance rings around me. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. I'm, I'm not used to doing it. His, his conditioning is up there to do what it needs to do and no more, really. With Stefan, makes so much sense as well because obviously his shooting is going to be more optimal the more relaxed he is and like he's had a hell of a season. So it's like, you know, just being able to kind of get in that kind of zone. So that's really interesting that they've got that. Well, then, yeah, it makes sense as well when you, he plays such a crucial role in the team. You want to do everything you can to be able to get him and be scoring those frees, right? Yeah, yeah, well, of course, of course, which raises the question, how scary would Michael Jordan be in today's game? Exactly, well, that, that's the thing, and that's so interesting, people say, because the three-pointers, would, would they, you know, that was like, I mean, for a start, like, the three-pointers only came in at a certain time, right, they, they weren't in at the very beginning, yeah. and then uh, yeah. just to see how much of, how much it's kind of changed the game now, and how much of more of a crucial part they play, it'd be interesting to see if that would became something he would have, you know, focused on how his shooting would have been, you know, overall, if he'd, if he'd had the time to work on his frees a lot more. Yeah, and 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 of course, just the scientific side of things and and, and recovery and because like you said, yeah, exactly. If, yeah. if not, if you're if you're jumping to get the shot away and you've got fatigued legs, you you know your legs are tired, your core's tired as well. You know, you're getting maybe into the last the last couple of minutes of the game. Shooting goes out the window. Yeah, shooting just goes totally out the window when when you're fatigued. Um, and so finding a way to get that heart rate down in 20, 20 seconds or whatever it is is absolutely amazing. That, that, um, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to do a little bit of digging into the science behind it as well. Um, that's exactly, so I'll, I'll report back. I'm, I'm excited to hear that, dude. I was going to say <laughs> that's exactly why buzzer beaters are, are the most exciting things in, in NBA. You know, when it's like there's a, a second on the clock and someone scores a free and it wins the game. I mean, yeah, that, that kind of stuff is just unreal. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it really is. And, you know, it, again, it comes down to conditioning. It comes down to conditioning, the amount of times, um, because of course basket basketball is a sport where you can pull somebody off the court and put them back on, and yeah. so they 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 can get used to like working in two, three, four minute little stints and then having a couple of minutes breather. And yeah. again, it's it's conditioning, it's getting your body used to a certain a certain thing, um, like 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 just certain repetition, you know, um, whereas football footballers. If you come off the pitch, you know, you don't get to go back on. You make a substitution, you come off and you stay off. So they need to be able to do certainly probably the first 45 minutes nonstop. Mm -hmm. You know, so that in itself is a different sort of cardio conditioning altogether. You know, so even when it comes down to saying cardiovascular fitness, you know, it's going to get better and develop and you should develop it in the direction that you want it to go. And it, you know? it, it's interesting how rules can totally change how a game is played. I mean, obviously they... They kind of experimented with rolling subs, I think, ju just after coronavirus, right? Or they had like a, more substitutions allowed in, um, in, yeah, in the bench. In the bench, yeah. And, and uh, it totally changes the game. And a lot of people hated it because they were like, well, it's, it's not fair, you know, because these teams are able, you know, like if you think of a world class team, the, 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 the second team is just as good as the first team. And they're mm -hmm. able to just kind of circle these players off when everyone else is getting fatigued. So it's like, it's interesting how the rules can totally change the dynamic of a game if tweaked yeah. even slightly. Yeah. So, yeah. And then by effect, the training that the, 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 the players maybe need to undergo, you know, if someone comes along and tweaks a rule that makes the thing that you've trained the last two years absolutely redundant, you'd be pretty mad. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah, you've only got to look at different athletes. And I know we did a couple of weeks ago as well, so when we were looking at different body types. But even different athletes that you would say need to be cardiovascularly fit, as in um, a Usain Bolt and a Mo Farah. It's in two different ways, isn't it? You know, um, it's it's two different types of training with two different goals in end. So as always, you know, like I like I've said over and over, try and make your training and your goals, um, or, or try and make your training specific to your goals as well. You know, um, figure out where you want to be, and then you can put a roadmap in place to get there. Um, okay, so that will uh, that will about do us for the uh, how the body works program. Um, so if we can spin on to the uh, the next slide, buddy, which should yeah. be. Planning your own fitness program. Okay, yeah. Spot on, cool. So for this one, it was the th it was thinking about um, get getting ourselves a little bit more um, a little bit more active, you know, looking at different components of fitness again. So uh, like me and Daniel were just on about there, you know, there was total difference between a muscular strength um, athlete or performer and, and training. Um, as opposed to sort of like aerobic endurance sort of training as well. So again, you know, sort of identifying what each of these different bits are, these different components. Um, I, I, again, you know, there's a whole session on that if you do want to go back and, 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 and recap on all of that. Um, 
and of course just pairing it up with different sports you know so we can say that of course flexibility and um, just for example it's it's a lot of ra- it's a lot of um, range of movement at joints or being able to move a joint through its full range of movement um sports of course that's going to be really important in uh, is stuff like your gymnastics um a lot of dancing as well and figure skating and stuff like that needs to need you to be quite flexible um and 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 again even some of the positions that some of these um sort of contact sport athletes get them positions in too you know takes a little bit of flexibility um totally. of course so so again if you're struggling with any of those give me a shout um and then yeah we were looking at ways to test them you know so it, it, it's all well and good to sort of say right um aerobic endurance is different to muscular strength how do i test each of those things separately you know and make sure i'm getting a good accurate reading on them to make sure that i'm making progress but at the end of the day, if we're not if we're not measuring anything and we haven't got any data in front of us, how do we know if we're making progress? Really, you know. Um, so again, you know, when it comes to when it comes to muscular strength, we might be talking about like a, a one rep max sort of deal where you'll put as much weight on a bar um, or a machine and just do one rep as heavy as you can, and then and then you're done. That gives you an idea of how strong you are across one repetition, um, and that'll give you a good idea of your muscular strength. It doesn't give you an idea of your aerobic endurance, though, because you don't have time to get out of breath necessarily um, and, 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 and for your body to really have to go through that aerobic sort of process. So to test our aerobic endurance, we might do something like, um, did you ever do the bleep test at school? Oh, of course, man, yeah. Threw, oh. Maybe I threw up doing it one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, torture, absolute torture. Um, for those of you that have never done the bleep test, um, I'm jealous. First of all, <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous. Oh, um, but the bleep test would be—it's just like it's—it's it's like it's almost like a click track. It's—it's it's like um, it's just like a, like an audio track that'll give you beeps at sort yeah. of predetermined intervals, x amount of seconds apart, and you've got to get from point A to point B. It might be cone A to point B, uh, cone A to cone B, one end of the gym to the other end of the gym, um, and of course make make sure that you're doing like sort of the right distance for the bleep test that you're doing. Um, might be like a hundred yards or something like that. Um, and the beeps get quicker. The beeps will speed up as you sort of progress through each level, you know? So yeah, the first couple of you might be sort of, sort of like sort of jogging along. We've all done it. The first couple of levels of the Cooper test, you're like, ah, oh, I got this, I got this all day, all day. And then, you know, it starts to speed up a little bit. It'll start to ramp itself up. Um, maybe you don't have as much time when you get to the end to sort of get a breather and sooner or later you're like just about hitting the end and then you turn it and you're going back at the same speed if not if not faster you know and that is a really really good test of how well your body can cope on that sort of cardiovascular level you know um your, your lung capacity can you can your body get the oxygen round um round of the muscles that need it you know it, 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 like if you ever want <laughs> if you ever want to see how much you're willing to like push yourself like you know, like how if you want if you if you ever willing to think like how much can I do this before I physically like choose that I want to give in? Mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing to do because in reflection, I feel like every time that I've done it, I quit because I was completely gone. But like I probably could have done a little bit more. But yeah. like it's probably not advisable because it's probably not in my best interest of my health. But I never <laughs> I never like finished the bleep test because I couldn't get to the second point. It was always because I thought I can't go anymore. I'm absolutely knackered. I'm gonna die. Like oh, <laughs> that, okay. is, that is it. Okay, yeah, so I just thought yeah. I'm coming off now. I just thought that every time I've done it, I thought like when I was in school, I'd be like, "This guy's all right. This guy's running with me, and he's like really fit. So like, I want to beat this guy. As soon as he stops, I'm gonna stop." And it would be stuff like that. I'd never actually got to the point where I, I couldn't make the second point because yeah. I was too gone. Yeah. It was always like, "No, nah, I'm finishing now." So I feel that's like interesting. That yeah, testing you like your own kind of limits as well in terms of like um, not just your physical ability, but also like a mental toughness kind of side of it. Mental as well. Yeah. Ooh. Like you say, you, you, you finish one length and you think to yourself, I'm never going to get back up the other end before that one. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, so yeah, you maybe don't even spin on the spot and, and, and go for it and try, you know? Um, yeah. and, and, and of course, more often than not, if you think you're not going to make it, you're right. Yeah, but it, it'd be yeah. nice to prove yourself right as well, you know, rather than yeah, just say, yeah, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to. Um, you, have you, did you ever do the Cooper run as well? 
I'm not sure, mate. Which one, what's, that, what's the crap with that? So, so the, the Cooper run, I remember doing it once or twice in PE at school. What it is, it's a case of um, measuring. It, it's pretty much just a distance run. So there's no real change in your speed. You're not really accelerating. Mm-hmm. Um so it's it is more a test of sort of like your longevity and how long you can maintain it for. Yeah. But all it all it is would be sort of like a like a circuit laid out with the cones maybe one foot away from each other or one meter away from each other. And it's calculated in a way where like a full lap maybe makes um I can't even think off the top of my head, but it's it's like a certain distance. So when you get to the end, all you've got to do is remember how many laps you've done. And then you're like, okay, I've done three laps and one, two, three, four cones. And that's where I am now. Um, and again, that'll be for a duration of time. Right. And then the, the, the next time, of course, your aim is to just get a cone or two further if you can. Um, so again, it, it sometimes it's, it, it's a mental thing, you know. Are you um, Do you need that mental stimulation every time of going, right, I've got to go faster, I've got to go faster, I've got to beat it. Or can you just sort of plod along at your own pace, you know. Um, or is the idea of doing that for 15 minutes, not like boring and like pulling teeth. You know, so there's different ways we can do it and there's different testing out there, you know, and that's that's just two of the most common ones that you might come across. And that's just for aerobic endurance as well, you know. If we were doing muscular endurance, it's a totally different type of testing. Flexibility, you might do. Um, have you ever done a sit and reach test? What's that again? It's kind of like, so, yeah, you know the thing that you stand on to get your feet measured for your shoe size? Mm-hmm. Or you're like, pull the bar down to where, you, where your feet end. So what you'll do, you'll sit with your with your legs straight and your feet against like a um, like 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 a box, which would be sort of like point point zero, and you're trying to just lean forward as far as you can and get as far as you can, and obviously beyond that that point where you go past your toes, it's measured maybe centimeters. And um, so you might say, okay, sit and reach test, I was able to get down to like mm. at ten centimeters, fifteen centimeters, or something like yeah, that, you know. That, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen people, and, and truth be told, I was at one point, and when I was doing my PT qualification, we were looking at different types of testing, um, and I couldn't even reach point zero. I was like, I, I, I couldn't even get on the board, mate. I wasn't even on the board. Yeah, my um, body's bad for stuff like that. Yeah, you know, but that was like, oh, okay, hamstrings need some work. Hamstrings need some work. And, and you go from that, and, and, and you build on that. If I hadn't ever done the sit and reach test, um, amongst other stuff, you know, yoga is definitely something that lets me know that I'm, I'm not as flexible as I might be, but I'm more flexible than I was. Yeah. Which at the end, at, at the end of the day, is, is the goal. You know, if it was definitely. a case of just jumping to the finish line, the whole process would be pretty boring, to be honest. Oh, we wouldn't yeah. learn anything. We wouldn't appreciate our results at the end. Um, it's got to be, it's got to be s- slow and steady, you know. And if you're better than you were last week, last month, last year, exactly. you're moving in the right direction, you know. Um, and and you should give yourself credit for that. You know, I, th- I think it's all too easy to see where other people are in their journey. You know, certainly people on social media and stuff like that that are maybe preaching a certain a certain way or, you know, this is what you've got to do to look like me sort of thing. And it's it's not always the case. It's yeah, not definitely. always the case. You know? um, there is a lot of flexibility out there. What you're seeing is something that has worked for one person. And, and that is it, you know, um, which is where sometimes some of the confusion comes in and it's like, right, these all work for these individual people, what works for me. And that only comes from trial and error and trial and error takes a bit of time, you know, at the the end of the day. So of course it's going in with that realistic approach as well. And and anything that you want to improve, you've got to accept where you are now and just be grateful for a little bit of, a a little bit of progress, you know, and it it, it takes, it takes however long it takes. Um, But yeah, just, just a little bit of touching on some different, different ways that we can, that we can test our, our sort of, um, different components of fitness again you know because we've talked about it um over the course fitness means something different to everybody you know you might look at um again looking at looking at a phil heath or a jay cutler as they get on stage for mr olympia arnold schwarzenegger is probably a little bit more of a, a, a like a well-known one you know he gets up on stage he looks he looks really fit he's in really good shape we can see that he's got good body composition we can see that of course his strength's going to be there as well you know he's absolute unit um yeah. But he's still lacking different components, you know. It wouldn't have been very flexible, you know, because you've got all that mass to work around. It's restricting your joints sometimes. Um, I wouldn't have fancied, um, I wouldn't have put any money on him in a 100-meter sprint, you know, in, 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 in terms of speed. So, again, there's different components that are going to be different to, to, to everybody, you know. We're, we're individuals at the end of the day. And what is important to somebody else that they might base their entire training program around might not even be on your radar. 
you know, I might not even be thinking anything that you're thinking, oh, I want to get better at that, you know, your attention might be best off spent elsewhere. Because at the end of the day, I think a lot of a lot of simplifying the process is just helping people get more out of their time, you know, um, because it's, especially at first, fitness and exercise and changes to a re- routine can feel like a little bit of a, a little bit of a chore, you know. Um, and it's just finding a way to reinforce that that, that, that they're working, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, man, I've got to go to the gym tonight and spend an hour and a half doing the same thing that I did this day last week, and I know I've got to go and spend an hour there tomorrow night and stuff like that, it really does start to build up them barriers in your mind mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and, of course, that is one of the barriers that we, that we talked about, a little bit of people having time to go to the gym um, or exercise, you know, given the circumstances that we're in right now with gyms closed. So I always used to say to people when I was speaking about personal training, I would always put it in a way of, okay, so how many times in a week do you come to the gym? If you're putting, say, an hour a night in five days a week in, into the gym, of course, that's five hours across the space of a week. That's five, five nights that you're getting in from work and coming back out to, 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 to the gym, you know, um, and then you're getting in at whatever time and getting your tea and stuff like that. I said, like, if you were to come and train with me, or any trainer, any 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 trainer really, um, or just even simplify and focus your training a little bit more. You you could either be in and out in half an hour, or you cutting down you and you cutting down your time there, or you can work to the point where you can get X amount of training done to the point where you can actually have the next night off. Yeah. You know, you might be able to say, right, okay, in an hour tonight, then I can do my I can do my quadriceps and my shoulders rather than quadriceps yeah, yeah. today, shoulders tomorrow. If you can find a way to put them together, um, if you can find a way to put them them sort of things together, it saves you a lot of time, you know? I was used to, um, have, you, have you ever come across supersets and heard about supersets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, um, yeah. I used to superset like lateral raises. So I'd do like a, a couple of different lateral raises in a row. Like I'd, I'd finish one set and then I'd do the next set. But like, oh, okay, um, yeah. Did, did, yeah. so yeah. But um, it cuts, cuts down on time that you that, that you sort of stood around. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you you might do your ten reps or whatever it is. I've just seen uh, Gaz is getting in the chat. Morning, Gaz. Morning, Gaz. He should be able to help, help us out a little bit here yeah, as well. Yeah. I know he's been doing um just some new resistance band stuff. Um, uh, I was sort of pointing out some extra couple of bits for him the other week. Um, and 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 it does. You know, you 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 realise that a little bit more flexibility and train changing your training up a little bit can actually save you some time. Like I would always say to people, um, like like I say, if it was if it was quads and, sh- and, and shoulders day, I'd be like, right, you've done your squats. Um, right, do you want to spend two minutes stood around letting your heart rate come back down and recovering, or do you want to get some overhead press in there as well and get your shoulders working? Because the added benefit of that is while your legs are working, your shoulders are resting and vice versa. So by the time you've done one, you can go to the other. Yeah. You know, so you can do the sort of thing you were doing where you sort of pick the same muscle in the same muscle group and hit different exercises, different ranges, different angles. And at the same time, you can actually give those muscles a chance to rest while you do something else. Yeah, it's interesting. Rather than standing around for two minutes, uh, maybe get distracted by your phone or whatever. Two minutes becomes five, um, which, which is so easy to do. And then you do 45 minutes of quad training and you're like, right, I need to do my shoulders now. And that's how we creep into an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Sort of thing, you know. Um, if you are maybe trying to get some cardio in there as well, don't do an hour's worth of weights and then go and spend half an hour on the treadmill. Um, maybe can you get a skipping rope? Yeah. You know, can you can you do your bench press? Can you do your press ups? Can you do your pull ups or whatever? And then can you just do some steady? It doesn't have to be like hundred mile an hour. Um, it's what, what we sometimes call um, active rest. Yeah, yeah. So you're maintaining that high heart rate. Your body's still burning. Um, but at the same time, the muscles that you're trying to work can rest because you need them to rest before you go in for your next working set, you know, because um, we're trying to obviously put the, put the resistance on those muscles as well. So, yeah, we can actually save ourselves a little bit of time doing it that way. So, again, we're, we're removing certain barriers from training which is which is obviously which is obviously key, you know, to going forward and, and making sure that things are sustainable, um, and that at the end of the day we get to a point sooner or later where it doesn't feel like necessarily so much of a chore, you know, because especially those first couple of weeks, I've said before, you know, you're aching, you're making changes, you're making sacrifices, you're taking time out your day to do stuff that you've maybe never done before or haven't done for years, you know, those first couple of weeks. 
Um, certainly, if you overdo it, you'll sicken yourself off because you'll think I've just hurt for two weeks solid and I haven't lost half a stone yet. Yeah. Uh, this this isn't working, you know. Um, so again, you've got to give yourself some chance to sort of sustain it and, and, and make sure you can stick with it. Uh, cool. So I'm just looking through the rest of this workbook um, just before we finish up on this one. So we were looking at um, different heart rate resting zones, how we take our own um, heart rate and how we can there from then say, okay, this is my resting heart rate. Um, looking at our max heart rate as well, you know, yeah. 220 two, two, two minus your age. If you're 20, 20 years old, you can say, okay, my maximum heart rate should never be any higher than 200. So from there, you can say, okay, working at sort of 70% of my max heart rate is better for fat burning. I'll come down to that level then. So then you can actually calculate what that 70% would be. Um, so so what would that be? 100, 140 beats per minute, just off the, off the top of my head. My math is terrible. Oh, I might be well off, but, um, you, you, you know, so 100, 140 beats a minute. If you're running and you can say, okay, I'm, I'm looking at... Um, if you've got, because a lot of machines in the gyms these days will actually give you sort of like a rough idea where your heart rate is um, sort of while you're exercising, but Fitbits are more accessible now, you know, sort of, um, and they don't have to be your, your branded ones. You can just get sort of like a little fitness watch, something that will maybe track your steps, do your heart rate. It doesn't have to take phone calls. You don't have to be able to send texts on it. Um, but even stuff like that can be really helpful for saying, okay, I want to work at 70% of my maximum heart rate because that puts me into this sort of burning zone. Um, and I need to make sure that I've got the data so I can stay in that zone as well, you know? Uh, and of course, make sure that you're not going over that max heart rate as well, you know? Um, Cause of course, something else that we looked at, we want to be able to exercise um, safely, you know, at the end, at the end of the day, um, we want to make sure that we can be safe in there. Uh, just joining in any exercise or fitness that we might be doing. Uh, and then the last thing that we sort of did in that booklet really was um, trying to set yourself some targets, trying to um, sort of break down, put yourself something in place, you know, can you say it yourself, right, Wednesday morning I'm going to do this, Thursday evening I'm going to do this, give yourself a little bit of a schedule. And it might make it easier to work around some of them barriers as well. You know, I'd mentioned before about when it comes to childcare, if you've got a couple of people that are all struggling for childcare, you know, again, kind of impossible at the minute with the way things are, but could maybe one parent look after all the kids for one hour, one night of the week, yeah. and then, then the next night another parent takes a turn and everybody can get everything done that they need to do, you know? Scheduling and organizing and a little bit of routine can really help with that sort of thing, you know? Again, we've mentioned that finances and the cost of certain things related to health and fitness can get in the way and be a barrier, you know? Um one of the reasons that we've mentioned this as good a time as any to start looking now, you know, don't wait till the summer and say, right, I'm going to get fit or I've got to, I've got to fork out 20 quid for a kettlebell. You know, if that's what you're going to do and you decide that's what you want to do, start saving a little bit now, if you, if you can, you know, I'm aware that that's not always possible for everybody, you know, especially the circumstances that we're in at the minute. Um, there is obviously the, the, the large sort of economic effect as well as the health effect that we're, that we're looking at. Um, so again, can we be can we be thinking about ways to reduce that cost? You know, I've actually got um, the fitness video that I've, uh, that I've that we've put on the end of today's session is actually just using um, a couple of bits and bobs from around the house. You know, it might be tins from um, could be tins from in the cupboard. I know I think I've mentioned before, um, even like the big sort of. Um, sort of wash, washing detergent and stuff like that. We got a big bottle of that at the start of lockdown. And as soon as that was gone, I realized the handle on the side of it makes it perfect for a kettlebell, you know? So all it would be would be a case of just filling up that with a little bit of water. And you've got adjustable weight there as well, you know? Um, you, you, can, you, you can even do sort of whatever it is that you're doing at full weight, you know, the bottle's full. You might be doing kettlebell swings or whatever. As you get tired, pour some out. It's only water. At the end of the day, obviously, pour it down the sink. Point, don't, just, don't, don't just pour it out, but like, oh, you get pagged, pour some out. Oh, I can get some more reps in. You're, you're essentially doing a drop set, what we, what we, what we call yeah. a drop set. That is something that we would do in the gym where as we get to the point where we can't push a certain resistance anymore, we just lower the resistance a little bit so we can go and get maybe one or two more repetitions out, and then you might drop again and keep going and keep going. Um, and that, that's something we can do it 
in sort of comfort of our own home, which we kind of don't have a choice of at the minute, um, without it costing a great deal either. You know, so sometimes just thinking outside the box a little bit, you know. Um, and I, I, Gary, I, I know you've got your resistance bands. Um, you can get you can get a pack of like different strength resistance band for, for, for uh, like a few quid off, off, off Amazon or eBay yeah. or something like that. Normally be a little bit cheaper the longer you're waiting for it to, uh, or the longer you're willing to wait for it to come, you know. So again, can you get ahead of the game? Can you think to yourself now, right, okay, that's a couple of quid. If I order it from here, it might take a month to come. Um, I'll do that now. I'll do that now so I'm not getting closer to the time and saying I want to do it now. I've got to bite the bullet and pay extra for next day delivery or from yeah. somewhere that's a little bit more, um, maybe that is a little bit more sort of convenient, you know, because we pay for convenience at the end of the day. Um, we, we always do. So, again, it's a good time to sort of have one, one eye on the future and thinking about what, what you think might work for you. You know, so again, that that should be just about that workbook finished up now. Of course, we're listing um, any barriers that you can think of and ways to, to overcome them. You know, I know we've just mentioned a few there and there, 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 is, there is, of course, more in the session that we covered all of that. So again, go back and check that out if you um, if you feel as though you still need to fill in any of those little bits. Um, but that should just about do us for the um, planning your own fitness program workbook. So again, buddy, if we can spin on to the yeah. next slide, and that was when we started to dig into um, sort of looking looking at more sort of transferable skills as well, you know, and, and we're looking at, 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 at presentation skills um, because because of course what what we've done throughout the course of the uh, or, or the duration of the course, we've been um, I think we've done we've done two separate presentations, including this most recent. Um, unique fitness class that, we, that we've worked on the last couple of weeks um, because of course earlier on we did one just on any kind of health and fitness um, topic at all really you know um, and, and it's always interesting to see what you guys come up with uh, because it's an insight into something that I might not have really come across before you know and um, we've had learners do posters on stuff to do with like I say health conditions that I've never even heard of you know that is that is maybe dictating the, the 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 life or or a big part in the life of these individuals um so again really interesting to see um an insight into that side of things and again anything that you're passionate about you know and um, we we used a demo um when we actually did this we looked at a, a poster done in the past by uh one of our previous learners who pretty much lived and breathed um meal prep so, of course, it was really close to his heart. He, he was really passionate about it. So that transfers into a really good presentation, you know. Um, it's engaging for the audience. Plenty of sort of visual aids to draw in, maintain attention. Uh, it was capture your attention in the first place, you know. We're talking about things like um, not necessarily just chucking a load of text on there because as, as, as the audience or as the reader, you might be a little bit off by just a wall of information mm, definitely you know so, so breaking it down little, little little sort of sections easy to see maybe it's even subheadings or like you want to know about this or it's over there and it's really straightforward um, and, and really easy to follow you know so yeah we um we, we looked at reasons uh, that we might use a presentation you know why it might be important um, and why it might be important to sort of develop these these skills you know because i think it's something that we that we're all still working on you know, at the end of the day, I don't know anybody who absolutely loves and, uh, and, and, and again, lives and breathes for public speaking. You know, nobody um, that I knew used to like being the one getting dragged to the front of the class or oh, come on, come up and do your, your presentation now or, or whatever it is, you know. And, and it is, it's just, it's just a skill that amongst others, it's something that we're all actively working on or can all actively be working on. You know, you might look at someone who gives a presentation and you, and you might say, look, they've done a really good job, you know that's not to say that there's not even room for improvement in there you know it's the same as anything um you're never going to be a full master of it maybe you know um it, it does take time and it does take a little bit of work and sometimes it is a little bit of the old fake it till you make it sort of thing you know you don't have to be brimming with confidence up there if you can put across that you that, that you're full of confidence as well you know um, a lot of again, I think I mentioned this on on the week that we sort of covered this. I think you were on with me actually, but mm -hmm. we were looking at um, a lot of comedians, um, anybody who gets up there and do, and does like a TED talk, yeah, anything like that, you know, um, public speakers in general, 
it's not a case of that they don't feel that anxiety and those nerves and that adrenaline rush. It's a it's a human response. Um, all they get better is at is just learning how to use it and channel it, you know, and use it for good energy rather than rather than negative energy. Um, so it's not a case. You might look at someone who stands up there and does a dead calm and think, you know what, I wish I was like that. You don't know the full story. You, 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 you really don't. You don't know if you're stood there giving your presentation. If somebody's thinking the same about you, mm-hmm. you know, oh, look at them. They're doing a really good job. I wish I was that good. And you might be up there. The paper might be going like that in your hands. Do you know what I mean? And you might be, you, 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 you might be, oh, you yeah. might be panicking on the inside. You know, the, 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 the fire alarm's going off in your mind and the sprinklers are going and it's like just absolute chaos. Um, but it's a case of how it comes across as well, you know. But, so, but of course, again, don't be fooled into thinking that someone's got it figured out or, you know, you're going to get to a point where you're like, oh, okay, I can, I can public speak now, you know, because it is. It's just something that, that, that comes with time. You know, it was something that I think I mentioned to you and on the week that we did it as well, that, that wedding speech that I had to do, that best man's speech, you know. As someone who at the time was standing regularly in front of a room of 20, 30 people and sort of instructing, telling them what to do, um, even just that change of tone that is mm-hmm. required and that that sort of the authority and the responsibility has changed altogether as well. And I was dreading it, man. I was absolutely dreading it. I couldn't enjoy the first half of my sister's wedding because I was so focused on delivering this speech at, sort of, at, at the mail, you know. Um, and, and then, of course, from from there, more often than not, you think to yourself, oh, what was I worrying about? Man, like what, what was I stressing about? That one of the last times I did like a real kind of that I can remember like public speaking I was promoting media savvy classes somewhere and um I was a couple of minutes late to the venue because I couldn't find it because it was the first time I'd been there um yeah. and then I got there and literally I just got there so I felt a bit flustered because I was a couple minutes late and like I sat down to get my like breath back and then they were like oh so we've got Daniel here from media savvy um, everyone gather around and literally <laughs> where I was sat, right? They all turned the chairs around and like moved in towards me, like in a circle. Oh, and then, dude, wow. I was just like, whoa. And then like literally yeah. like I sat and I actually in front of them, I just went like this. Yeah. <sighs> like, yeah. cause I, I had to get my breath back and I felt so <laughs> overwhelmed and it, it felt kind of awkward and it looked kind of, it probably looked like weird for a couple seconds, but then mm-hmm. like I just went into it and yeah. there was a couple minutes when I was talking and I had to just, like stop and then get a breath and then start talking again mm-hmm. it, it just went fine after that and we had a really good response from them and everyone like we, we had really good reviews from it but but, but like it just was a surreal experience and like if that ever does strike you where you literally feel like uh, like you just you, your mind gets the better of you just take a second who cares what everyone else is thinking if that's what you need just take a second or like what we mentioned before like another great tip is if you've got a bottle of water no one's going to think anything of you if you open up your bottle of water so just literally just open it take it yeah. take a breath and then just have a drink and then put it back down and be like okay so this is what i'm talking about like that's fine it's totally yeah. fine and uh you don't have to be like thinking i can't break but i do this <laughs> like you didn't it, yeah. it doesn't have to be like that so uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Definitely, man. That's uh, like you say, and, and we sort of uh, said at the time as well. You know, anything like a bottle of water, anything that you can have like that to be like a little anything that just buys you a couple of seconds. But again, at the, at the end of the day, like Daniel's just saying there, it's no problem if you've got to just stop and take a breath, or at the start of the thing, just just take a couple of breaths. Because using that example there, buddy, you can guarantee that the thing that people remember from that moment or from that interaction um, is the information that you've then got across probably in, in, in a calm, composed manner, yeah. you know, they're not remembering what the two breaths that you took beforehand. Of course they don't. Yeah, yeah. Of course they don't. They're like, you can you remember that time that, 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 that lad did that weird breathing thing? Like, no, <laughs> of course they don't. They're, 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 not, they're, they're not bothered. They'll be thinking about, oh, he delivered that, that presentation really well. That's made that a lot clearer. I'm actually going to go and investigate what these guys are doing a little bit more, you know, whereas if you hadn't taken those seconds and just sort of maybe taking the hit in your own mind, taking the hit of all these, yeah, just yeah. look at this while I take a couple of seconds. You might've just rushed through your presentation. Do you know what I mean? Not, not really stopped for breath all the way through. We've got up, done what you had to do, moved on. And they might not have retained a thing, yeah. you know, um, or they might've checked out halfway through because they're like, this guy doesn't even sound like he believes what he's talking about, you know? Um, and, and of course, the more you buy into something and the more enthusiastic you are about something, um, the easier it is to get that across and to resonate with other people. Um, and that is really difficult to do when you're, when you're sort of flapping, 
for, for, for lack of a better term, you know, so um, it really is hard to do. So, you know, if you need to take a couple of seconds, like again, when, when we're doing presentations between ourselves, you know, if you just like, like just Rob, give us, give us a minute. I'm just, I just need to compose myself. That's fine. That is absolutely fine. You know, um, sort of set these, set your own boundaries for yourself as well and how much you're sort of willing to um, adhere to what you think other people expect from you at your own expense. You know, sometimes you've just got to say, look, I, I, I need a breather, I need to just take a second um, and then you can move on from there. You know, um, at the end of the day, that's not what people are going to remember. Um, but I, I, again, you know, there's a lot more than you think about goes into a presentation when you break it down like this, isn't it? You know? Um, but again, we can break it down. And I think that um, the third workbook that we were using was the presentation skills workbook. You know, so we were looking at things like how do we use visual aids to our sort of um, to our benefit? Um, why might we use a presentation in the first place? What what types of presentations are sort of suitable across different mediums? You know, um, do you are you designing a poster that is going to sit on the wall and speak for itself when you aren't there to explain it to other people? Or are you doing it in uh, a sort of a setting where you are still going to be there going through your PowerPoint maybe, or, you know, breaking each point down? So that's something to think about as well. I, I knew somebody that uh, actually lost, like, significant marks because they, they couldn't do a presentation. Like, literally, like, so it definitely gets to people because, like, it, we were graded on our presentation. Like, it was part of, like, when I was at uni, it was part of, like, the grading criteria was you do a presentation, mm -hmm. it's X amount of the grade, and then you do the actual project um and they just couldn't bring themselves to do it and, and and they actually lost marks because of it but uh it's crazy but they were literally they they told me that they felt sick they were sick last time they did it afterwards like 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 it's it's it can get to some people that just they have like a phobia of it so it's yeah. uh it, it it can be tough you know yeah like tr tr truth be told me you know it, it's it's only through um doing what I've done for as long as I have that I've got more used to it. I was always really sort of um, quiet, quite sort of introverted and the thought of being dragged up in front of a group of people. Um, like I say, it, it used to make me ex exactly like that. And I remember doing my PT course um, and there was one day that we were told, look, you're doing your um, spinning assessment, which is obviously like your studio cycling. Mm -hmm. um, so like your, your, your spin class assessment on Friday. And I had like four days to plan for this. Um, and it was kind of having that much notice. I just got myself more chewed up mm -hmm. and maybe because I was doing, um, the classroom I was studying in was through in Jesmond, which is about an hour's drive for me, maybe about an hour and a half in traffic at that time of day that I was going through. Um, I had the full drive in on the morning knowing that we were doing this and I was like, I just want to be there. I just want to be there. Oh, I, this man. Absolutely awful. Like I'm sat in traffic trying to get across the Tyne Bridge. I'm just like, oh please, man. Um, because you just get into your own head and you chew yeah. yourself up about it. And I find that sometimes the more you let yourself do that, the worse it gets. Totally, like totally, totally, truth yeah. be truth be told, um it's one of them where like when someone puts their hand or when someone says who wants to go first, nobody tends to put their hands yeah. up. Um and that day the traffic was particularly bad. Now was the last one in the classroom, and the guy just went, Oh Rob, you can go first. I was like, oh, man, I just wanted the ground to open up and, and swallow us. <laughs> but five minutes later, mine was done. Everybody still had theirs to do. And I got to spend the next couple of hours spinning, doing other people's tracks, knowing that mine was done. And I'm not That's sat there thinking, oh, feeling, man, right. mate, I wouldn't have wanted to go last. Yeah, thinking course, about it, going yeah. last would have been the worst because I'd, I'd have done... Another 12 spin classes on top of that as well. That's you it, man. Go, go first is definitely the best because you get it out the way with it and then you don't have to think about it anymore. So. Just, just pulling a plaster off, isn't it? Yeah. Just pulling a plaster off, get it get it done. And uh, and, and it, you'd probably be better off for it, you know, when it comes to, uh, certainly when it comes to stuff like that and your own mental processes are working against you, which is totally natural. Yep. It really is. It really is. There's not many people that I've met that are born natural leaders that just sort of exude confidence and, and the ability to public speak and stuff like that, you know. Totally um, most, again, like I say, most of the people in that position are going through exactly the same thoughts and processes that you are as well, you know, so um, don't, don't think that it's just you, definitely not.
Um, okay, so yeah, we did um, the, the presentation skills workbook where we're looking at different types of visual aids and when we might use them and how they might um, they might engage the audience as well. You know, we're talking, um, like, like I say, bright colours, you know, are going to get people's attention as they're walking past big sort of subheadings, clear sections that you're... Um, that you're able to sort of break down what it is that you need to see. Pictures, maybe. Um, it might be graphs. It might be pie charts. It might be bar charts, something that gives actual data and sort of substance to the point that you're trying to make across as well. So we've got those different visual cues as well that are going to be used sort of at different times. Um, so, so yeah, it's definitely something to think about. Uh, and I think... That was about it for that booklet. That was um, just just a short little booklet. That yeah, one that yeah. we, well, I think we whipped through in in, in a week or two, to be honest. Um, okay, then we did our taking part in exercise and fitness booklet. And um, if we can roll the next slide, please yeah, do. Yeah, we got it. Man. Um, oh, Gary says he's having a nightmare getting his, getting his bin sorted out. I wonder what's going on there. You know, over over, over the last couple of weeks, um, obviously the snow's got in the way. Yeah, <laughs> that's a nightmare, man. Yeah, I put my bin out one week. I dragged it in the next day and I thought it was just heavy because of all the snow on the top. It just hadn't been touched. <laughs> the, 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 the bin men hadn't been down the street at all. I was like pulling it through like this much snow up the drive. There was that much snow on the lid. I'm like, oh, this is heavy. This is heavy. Yeah, Alex Alex says, oh, they've just put online. The bin hasn't been collected. It's like, oh, that makes sense. Well, that makes sense. Where I live, it's like every man for himself and none of the bins are marked. <laughs> so it's like, there's just literally a bunch of bins outside and it's just like, it's literally a free for all. So oh, <laughs> it's man. like, oh man, you're getting up to get your bin in like you're on holiday going for the sunbeds. Pretty much, pretty much man. <laughs> yeah, wait, waiting at the door like, oh, come on, I'm going to have myself a bin this That's week. Fair. Yeah. Um, I they're just lazy drivers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're on to the um, take a part in exercise and fitness um, workbook that we did. Um, so we were just looking at different activities local to yourselves and in the area that is local to yourself and, you know, sort of linking in what we sort of opened today's session with about now's as good a time as any to be sort of looking, you know. Yeah, all of these the facilities might be closed right now. You've still got maybe parks, beaches, you know, that you're still allowed to go and, 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 and walk in. Uh, you know, I know that things like... Um, of course, a lot of indoor clubs and stuff like that are, 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 are closed at the minute. But again, can you start having a little bit of a look around? Can you do some research? Can you pull some stuff together and say, OK, I'm going to keep an eye on that when it opens again? Because not only were their prices OK pre-lockdown, but, you know, there might be a lot of promotions sort of coming in as people and businesses are trying to drum up business and, and bring customers back in again. And, of course, make them feel comfortable um, coming coming through their doors. Um Again, can you can you sign up to a couple of email lists and just they'll let you know their procedures and any any sort of deals that might be coming up. So, like I say, there's 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 plenty of time right now, certainly for for a lot of us to to be doing that little bit of research. You know, uh, is it is it group exercises in in community halls? You know, and then you can knock on from there and think, oh okay so there's group exercise i'm going to try and find one that will offer some kind of loyalty scheme you know you do five ten classes you get one free and that can remove so, some of the barriers to do with cost yeah. um, and, and and stuff like that as well so we we all know what gets in the way of our exercise i think because we all know that we should exercise we all know that it's important um so there's reasons why we don't at the end of the day um, and so, so what is it getting in the way? What stops you more often than not? Have we covered something sort of over the over the last twelve weeks where you think, oh, do you know what? I might try that to sort of alleviate that pain a little bit. Um, you, you you know, so like I say, there's there's a lot of scope for going forward and thinking about how you can make things a little bit easier for yourself. So think about your own barriers that are getting in the way. How can we um, sort of break those down a little bit? Um, okay, cool. Then we looked at health and safety, doing things, sort of making sure that we're doing things safe, sort of within our own abilities, you know, because some of the responsibility would lie with the class instructor to make sure that you're not doing anything that you shouldn't be. Um, at the end of the day, you've got responsibilities yourself to do things safely, follow instructions, uh, use machines and kit, of course, the way that you've been shown to. So it's, it's a two way, it's a two way street, really. Um, and if you're training by yourself in the gym, a lot of that responsibility is just on yourself. You know, gym staff will give you an induction and give you a show round. Um, beyond that, 
more often than not, it's up to you to make sure that you are using the machine safely. Like if, if a staff member sees you using something wrong, it would probably come over. You know, the amount of people that I've approached on the gym floor and just say, look like careful with this. If you try doing it this way, um, just to give that little bit of correction. But of course, even the staff can't have eyes in the back of their heads and they can't have like the, the head on a swivel and, and, and a 360 and always see what's going on. So uh, again, that some of that responsibility lies with you and making sure that you're knowing how to be in that fitness environment safely. You know, do you know your own limits? Yeah. Um, can you let the class instructor know your limits so he can give you alternative exercises? Again, something that I, I try and do myself in all the fitness videos that we do and we have up on the channel. I'll always try and make sure there's alternatives you know, so if you're like, I mean, these don't like these squats, what can I do? Um, there might be something else that you can do. You know, it might be a glute bridge that's going to still engage your glutes as well and a little bit, a little bit of hamstrings. It's not always a direct trade-off. You know, you can't always get like for like. Um, but at the same time, there might be other ways around it as well, you know. And of course, we, we, we don't expect you to know that. That's for the instructor to know and to be able to provide. But we've got to know your limits beforehand, you know, um, just, just to keep you from, from doing something like that. Um, of course, again, taking responsibility for your own well-being. We're talking about a warm-up and a cool-down. You know, we went over why they're important, how they can help reduce injuries, get your body ready for um, a little bit of exercise and a little bit of movement. You know, because chances are we're going into our exercise, certainly right now from quite a sedentary point of view. We've either, we're either doing it first thing on the morning where we're just getting out of bed and we're quite stiff from being in what position we've been in for six, seven, eight hours maybe, yeah. you know, or we're doing it at the end of the working day where we've maybe sat in the same place for, again, six, seven, eight hours um, with, with, without moving very far, especially if you are working from home right now, um, working from a computer and stuff like that. You know, a laptop link goes down. It's like, right, I'm going to do some exercise. If you just jump straight in and your muscles have been sat in the same position for eight hours, you're going to hurt yourself, you know? Um, and maybe you need to, again, miss a day, two days, a week, two weeks, and um, just through that injury. So for the sake of five minutes to warm up and cool down, we can actually prevent a lot of that, you know? True. <clears throat> and then, of course, looking at how certain things and certain personal skills that are going to factor into your fitness journey are going to factor into the rest of your life as well. You know, you're talking time management skills um, punctuality. It used to wind me up no end when I would have, I have seven bikes for a spin class and I had seven names down. So I'm telling people the class is full, you know, sorry, no, you can't book onto that one. I'll book you on for tomorrow. And then three of them don't turn up. Yes. That, that must be so annoying. And it's, and it's like, you know what, not only obviously like the, the business side of things and I could have had more people in the class, but for me, delivering a class to more people is better because it's more energy. Yeah, yeah. You know what, mate? I did one spin class that one person turned up for me. It was the most awkward thing. <laughs> but it's, it's me here cycling and them there cycling and we're just looking at each other. Do you know what I mean? I, it really was. It really was where you've got a, a, like a room full of people. The energy's higher. It's easier to sort of motivate. People can bounce off each other. Um, takes the pressure off me as well, you know, because they're looking elsewhere. They're, they're engaging with people sitting on the bikes next to them, maybe. Um, but again, that, that sort of time management and punctuality is, is huge. It would be weird because it's like when you when I've seen spring class like that, it's like if there's like music pounding or whatever, mm -hmm. and they're like really like the, the instructor's like, come on, guys, let's go. And it's just like you're in another person just like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't say, come on, guys. Yeah, yeah. And you can't, you can't come say, on, come on, come on, guy. Yeah, come on, guy. <laughs> Like graft, graft, but uh, no, it's it, it is you know, and for a lot of different reasons, that sort of time management, punctuality, like oh, made PTs were the same as well. Personal training sessions, someone booked in for ten o'clock, five past comes, ten past mm -hmm. comes, still no sign of them. I think oh, they're not coming. I'll get the Hoover out and whip the Hoover on the gym floor. Plug goes in the wall. Who, who rings the doorbell at the front door? Turned up fifteen minutes late for the PT session, and I'm like <laughs> right. Right, okay then. I'll just put all of this away again safely because I can't leave it there, health and safety. I've got to put it all away again um, and, and and then I'll do this PT session and I'll come back to that later on, you know. But of course, those are just a couple of my pet peeves. But of course, it, it, goes, it goes outside of fitness as well, doesn't yeah. it? You know, if you're meeting somebody at the cinema to go see a film and you're like, oh, move, movie starts at 11, they're not there, five past, ten past, quarter past put you in a position do you go in without them do you keep waiting do you do you miss the whole movie altogether potentially like um 
it's it's sort of affects other people as well, doesn't it? You know, and I think it's it's, it's easy to forget that when it comes to a workplace. You know, your time management and your punctuality is going to be massive. Totally. You know, are you turning up for work on time? You know, are you um, managing your time effectively to get your jobs done that you need to do? Yeah. You know. <clears throat> It would be a case of like if I sat here and for an hour and a half we talked about last week's session, and then in the last half an hour I said, "Oh, we're going to recap the other eleven sessions that we've done." You know, it it makes no sense. It would mean that a lot of the stuff that needs to be done at a certain pace it would it would be rushed, and and it comes across in your work as well. You know, I mean, we've all done it. We've all done it in school where you leave your homework till the night before. And you just hand in the absolute bodge job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most rushed thing. Oh, yeah, um, and it's like, there you go. And and, and of course, the, te- the teacher, more often than not, knows if that's the best of your ability, you know. Um, they, 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 they see you work in class and they, they get used to a certain quality of work. Um, employers maybe get used to a certain quality of work as well. So when they give you a little bit more freedom over your time management and things start to decline... You know, they know that that's maybe the freedom that you, that you can't have or shouldn't have right now. Um, so, yeah. I, 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 again, you know, it's it's building that confidence in yourself from yourself, but from other people as well, you know. Um, it's it's exactly the same as, 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 again, you know, sort of working with colleagues. If you said to somebody, look, I've got to have this done by the end of the day, will you give us a hand? And they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they disappear and you don't hear nothing, nothing else from them for the rest of the day. And then five o'clock comes and it's like, oh, sorry, I forgot. Or you just don't hear anything anyway. They're a little bit like, why did I bother wasting your breath for asking? Do you know what I mean? And and, and that opportunity might not, or, or that might not be extended next next time. You know, that, that, that vote of confidence it's, might not be extended next time. It's a horrible feeling when you're waiting for someone and, you, you know, if they're, like, late or whatever and you just feel like any other thing that you do, you're not going to be able to focus or enjoy it because you think, I'm going to have to stop as soon as this person comes if they come. So it's yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, as, as soon as, like, like what you're saying with the Hoover, I'm sure you were thinking then, like, I'm going to plug this in, but you're like, this person might come still. And then it's like, you actually do it and then they do come. So it's like, yeah. you, you can't be fully focused on whatever other task you do because you're still but thinking like they're coming. That was exactly it. Yeah, that, that was a case of, right, I'm not going to go and fill up like the bucket and start mopping mopping up like the, like the shower and stuff like that. You know, it's um, it was a case of picking something that I could do knowing there was a 50-50 chance that I would need to knock it on the head halfway through. And the thing is, like, as much as people come to know that you're reliable for your time management skills and your punctuality and stuff like that, um, people also come to expect the opposite, you know? If you if it's time and time again, like, I used to have clients that I knew that I didn't have to be ready on the dot because they were never there and ready, like, on the yeah, time yeah, that they yeah. were meant to be there. I was like, realistically, I've, I know I've got time for a coffee, you know? Um or, or to go away and get a couple of little bits done, you know, which is good for me. Yeah, yeah. But that's not good for the relationship between the two of us, you know, um, between between myself and client or myself yeah, yeah. and colleague, um, y- y- you know. So uh, again, you know that there's a lot of skills that we've worked on again over the over the course of what we've done, you know, even just in your presentations and that sort of thing that we're looking at them sort of skills, you know, um, and ju- and just making sure that we're thinking about the effect that it can have on ourselves and and, and other people, you know, and it it can get in the way of opportunities at the end of the day. So again, they're skills that I think we're all still always actively working on or or, or should be. Um, Okay, cool. So just to finish up that book that we did, we were looking at um, different hazards, you know, it was not necessarily in a gym environment. It was, it could be just sort of in the workplace. Um, Hatham jumped on one week where we were doing, um, it was just like a cartoon picture. Um, and there was like, it was like, pick out as many hazards as you can. Do you know what I mean? And there's like, obviously, over overstuffed um, plugs, overstuffed sockets, oh, yeah, that yeah. sort of thing, you know, maybe there's a water cooler right next to them, just waiting to sort of drip on them. Anything like that, being able to pick out hazards and, and a way to reduce those risks, you know, that's something that we can do in a fitness environment, you know, making sure that weights go away after ourselves, um, even in the house, you know, just making sure that any bits that you've used go, go away afterwards as well. Sure. Um and and again, you know, that is stuff that comes over into day to day life, not only the ability to um, acknowledge a hazard, but how do we reduce the risk of that as well? You know, and I'm aware that there's a lot of stuff out there where you, you'll never fully reduce the risk. Yeah. You know, um, you'll never eliminate the risk, but 
it's more often than not, it's just moderating that to, to what is deemed to be a safe level, you know. Um, and, and, and like I said, it, it, it's, a, it's another skill that will um, transfer over into life. It's not just fitness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the last exercises that we did on there were um, sort of looking at your own strengths. Um, like I said, looking at your own strengths, looking at your own weaknesses, uh, areas for improvement. How can you um, build up, build on those strengths and the areas for improvement? You know, um, and just it gives you an idea where to divide your to divide your training up to as well. Because like I say, it's easy to go into the gym, sign up, you do your induction, and then you're like, right now what? Now what? Then like, I watched a woman once come in and just use the treadmill every session for like a year. <laughs> she didn't know where to progress to. Yeah. You know, she didn't know where to go next. And um, when I spoke to her, she um, she she gave me very clear sort of goals and what she had in mind. But even then, when I said to her, right, come with me and I'll show you how to do that. She was still like, no, no, I'm just going to stay here. I'm just going to stay here and do this. Even though 30 seconds previously, she told me that what she was doing wasn't working. You know, <laughs> and, and I, 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 I kind of walked away a little bit baffled. But of course, we do get ingrained in these things um, and we do get our comfort zone. Um, so again, if, if, if you are doing this course or if you've done this course and you're thinking about stepping into, um, fitness, try not to pigeonhole yourself into just one thing or, or one, one bit of machinery. I mean, it is amazing if you've got something to the gym that you feel confident with or on, you know, at the end of the day, if you're a little bit nervous, if you know, right, I can go in, turn the treadmill on, run on it. I don't, I don't fall off, you know, um, I don't do anything that's going to make us look daft. I can go and do that. You know, that's really good for building confidence, but you've got to move on from there and do something else, even if it's another bit of cardio, uh, like machinery, you know, like the, like the rower or, or like a bike or a spin bike or something like that. Um, having somewhere to move on to and, and feeling confident sort of moving on and working on the areas that you're not so good at as well as the areas that you do feel good at, you know, because at the end of the day, if we just went to the gym and worked on what we feel like we're best at, we don't really improve. <laughs> Do we? You know, you're not you're not rounding yourself off and and working on those weak points, which is um it's important again in life as well as as well as in fitness. Uh, and I think yeah that that about do us for that workbook. We fly him and we fly him. Uh, which leaves us one more. I think the sport and active leisure pro uh, pro project, which is what we're kind of on at the minute, on and, and will be until we've booked in that one to one Zoom call, um, and 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 just deliver that. And it, it shouldn't take long at all, really. Um, of course, once it's um, once your presentation's done and it's a place that you are happy to sort of deliver it. So, again, we were looking at um, knocking up our own our own unique fitness class. Looking at the health and the, the health benefits, you know, um, variations of different exercises that we could do. Maybe it's even variations of the same class, you know. I um, nothing drastic, but what I did during the summer, I would bring the spin bikes outside. Still the same class, but it's nice doing it with a little bit of sun on your face, you know. It it, it, it really was. So even little variations you can do stuff like that. Um, then we were doing a little bit of research, you know, classes that already do similar sorts of things, and um, the. Be other benefits that you might not have thought about uh, and, and how you would make it possible, you know, um, although it is only something that we're doing in theory. Um, all the best ideas start off as theories, you know, at the end True. of the day. So it's, um, if you were to put this in, in, in practice and in place, what, what would that take, you know? Um, I know that, I know that uh, Mel's provisionally mentioned doing a few fitness classes as well. So she, it, it might be a case of one of these ideas or a couple of these ideas we sort of run with, you know, and it might actually become a fitness class. So um, I, I, again, you know, how would we put that into practice? How would we make it work? How would we sort of sell it to people? What's the, what's the biggest benefits of it? Does it eliminate barriers to fitness? And then, of course, um, just putting a little bit of a plan together using the, uh, using the booklet. So, of course, what do you need to do? Um, of course, we brainstormed ideas as well. You might have you might have had a load of ideas and it's taken you a little bit of time to sort of narrow down to which which idea you're actually going to try and like sort of pad out a little bit and sort of fully flesh out. Um, and, and, and we've made a note of that there as well. Of course, the way that we normally do this would be in, in groups. I'd mentioned last week, but uh, of course, the, 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 the nature of things at the minute and with us being online, um, 
we'll just be doing obviously all, all the research for different areas yourself. So there is a task in that booklet. It is task two, um, just for when you do get there. It just says um, the roles um, of research that are required. Then it asks for the individual responsible. Of course, in the in this case, it, it's just going to be yourself um, for all of them. Uh, so that will go in there. Uh, and then, like I say, it'll just be a case of a little bit of feedback, um, giving giving you a little bit of feedback once the presentation's actually done, um, and then course done. You know, all being well once the booklets are in, once the booklets are across, and the the presentation's done. Happy days playing sailing, and we can maybe potentially look forward to the um, to the level two that we've got coming up as well. You know, if if ho hopefully you've enjoyed the course, and if it is something that you have done, then uh, of course give me a shout, and I'll put your name down for that level two course as well, if you haven't already. Um, and then then yeah, that was it for that booklet. So booklets done, done and dusted. A little bit of a recap of everything that we've done. You know, pretty much twelve weeks summed up. If you want to dig into, into anything in a little bit more depth, um, I'm going to make sure that you've got the links to all of those videos and you can go back and um, catch up on them, revisit them, do a little bit of revision. Um, and like I said, just make sure we can get everything boxed off. Cool. So we're nearly there. We're nearly yeah. there. So yeah. just to spin on to the next slide, please, buddy. We've got, um, like I say, I, pr I, pr I promise you a little, bit of a, a little bit of a recap back to that healthy eating side of things. And I mean, it's a good chance to... Um, Gaz, you know, if, if, you, if you've really got any questions or anything like that, or if there's anybody in the chat who's got any questions, um, you know, um, Daniel, off the top of your head, is there anything that sort of, is there anything that confuses you when it comes to nutrition or is there anything that you think, oh, I'd like to know a little bit more about that, you know? Um, um, I'm sure there is. I'm, I can't really think off the top of my head, but I, I'm sure that there is, there's, you know, there's always there's definitely always something, right? So It's a minefield, isn't it? It's yeah, an absolute yeah. minefield because it's a case of, right, you read that and they say don't eat. You, you you know or protein is really good for you um some of these meats are going to give you um a good source of protein or oh, happy days then you read a different bit of research that says oh red meat is linked to this illness you're like oh okay, then. that is actually a really good point because it's always you know it's it's interesting that that um like well for forgive he's just an example of, of what of, of kind of what you're talking about and like what i'm saying is but I, I grew up always thinking always being told that breakfast is the most important meal of the day everyone drilled that into my mind from from when i was young and i mm -hmm. might i'm still saying it might, it might not it, it might still be to this day but then all of a sudden now a load of people are telling me well actually you shouldn't eat breakfast because that's intermittent fasting so if you don't eat until afternoon it's actually good for you because you're giving your body a rest so it's like stuff like that was a bit is a bit confusing i think definitely yeah yeah I, I, to, to be honest i think when this whole um breakfast is the most important meal of the day concept came about. I think as a society, we were living a lot more, I don't want to say, I don't want to say simple, but maybe with a little bit more routine, you yeah. know, um, it, it was a little bit easier to have your three meals at the same, same time every day, you know, um, in which case breakfast probably does set you up pretty well. And you've got to think as well, what the, the people that were always telling that to are kids, that we're then maybe he's going to send off to school for the rest of the day, you know, and if they don't have breakfast, are they eating a load of sweets? Is their attention span down? Can they focus? Are they misbehaving? So more often than not, you know, um, to those individuals, getting some breakfast in might be the most important meal of the day, not necessarily from a health point of view, but just from setting up for the rest of the day and doing it well sort of thing you know i've never met a kid in my life that's doing intermittent fasting you know? um and, and 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 nor should there be really yeah, you know yeah. um there are there are other ways to go about it intermittent fasting is something that can work really well for some people you know and and, and, and you can say that um breakfast the most important meal of the day but like you say the term breakfast actually comes around from breaking your fast mm. which is overnight but that doesn't have to be first thing in the morning. If you don't eat anything and eat something at one o'clock in the afternoon, you're still breaking your fast. Yeah. So it's not necessarily the timing of breakfast, but the first thing that you eat being really important for setting up the rest of your day um, is, is, is probably something to think about with that as well. You know, it's, it's a case of you're breaking your fast at whatever time you're eating for the first time in however long. Um, yeah. You want it to be a good quality meal, you know, um, you intermiss if you like intermittent fasting um, and only eating for six hours of the day. That first thing that you eat, you don't want to just be a load of junk. Yeah. 
do you? You know you're going to feel absolutely awful. You need something that's going to get in and deliver the macronutrients that your body needs at the time, your carbohydrates, your fats, your proteins, your vitamins, and your minerals. Because it's more important, I think, when you're only eating in a certain window. If you get to 6 o'clock evening and you say, all right, intermittent fasting, I'm only going to eat between 12 and 6 you get the six o'clock tea time and you're sitting down and you're working out how many calories you've had, how many macros you've had, have you had enough zinc, magnesium, potassium, are you getting enough of that in? You know, if you haven't, it's too late by that point, isn't it? You know, um, you, you, you're almost sort of out of time. So intermittent fasting can work really well. I've seen it work really well for, for a lot of people. Um, and it just puts a little bit more focus on the food that you are eating in that time as well, you know, because you've got to make sure that you're full as well. Um, you know, if you aren't going to eat after six o'clock, you don't want a McDonald's at five o'clock. That's all your calories for the day. And then half six, you're starving because McDonald's yeah, yeah. doesn't fill you up very much. You know, um, you've got your calories. Again, think of your calories like currency. Spend them on the stuff that you need first, you know, um, and then get the other bits in after if you've got any left over, you know. Don't eat a thousand calories worth of junk and then go, oh, I've only got 500 calories left a day for me for everything else that I've got to get in. You know, and one of the things that we looked at in the in the drop-ins on Monday morning was shopping on a budget. You know, when you're going to um, when you're going around the shops, um, if you've got a certain budget, don't load the biscuits and the cookies and the donuts in first, and then say I've only got a couple of quid to get what I need. You would do it the other way around. Prioritize your nutrients and your vitamins first, um, and and spending your calories should be exactly the same as spending your money. Because at the end of the day, if we're doing things right, we've only got so much to give and we want to make sure we get the right stuff in first and don't just pad it out with a load of junk and don't don't shop hungry because you're always going to buy oh don't don't do it man always going to buy like biscuits and stuff shopping hungry is the worst thing ever because guaranteed you're going to buy you're going to see something that takes your eye and you're going to buy it so yeah that's yeah, definitely. Healthy, so. Something will speak to you, yeah. And chances are, if you're in that point, your body is maybe screaming out for some form of carbohydrate, which when we remove a couple of steps from carbohydrates, it's sugar at the end of the day. And your body's not going to crave, oh, do you know what? I want that pasta that's going to take two hours for the carbs to kick in. It wants the donut that's going to kick in instantly. Exactly. It, it, it does, you know. And um, something that, that sort of, stuck out to me from doing my PT course. And again, we've sort of looked at it briefly on this where, you know, where we've looked at calories per gram of protein. Yeah. Which is, which is four. And we get four calories per gram of carbohydrate, whereas fats, we get nine. So it's more than double. We get nine calories per gram of fats. So if you're hungry and your body's needing calories, it's going to crave the fatty foods because your body knows that that's going to give you a bigger whack of calories. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you're starving, you don't go and get your, uh, you don't go and get your fish and your rice cake. Do you? You go and get your, uh, <laughs> your fish and rice cake because it's not going to, it's it's not going to fill you up very much. When yeah. you're starving, you think, oh, do you know what? I want a burger. I want oh, a pizza yeah. or something that's just going to have loads of fats that's going to make up for those calories. Jeez, you know, so it, mm, it's your body speaking to you and saying like, help us out a little bit, you know? Um, and, and again, you know, we, we, we've, we've sort of talked about healthier ways we can do stuff, you know, knocking up your own burger patties at home and, and being in control of what goes into them is a lot healthier than going out and grabbing one from a fast food or maybe it's even a restaurant, you know. Yeah. So we can still have these things. We can still have these things. It's not about eliminating them. I've always said, I, I think I said day one of the course, it's, it, it's no good making all these changes to be healthier and happy in our day-to-day life and just take away all the stuff we enjoy. It's counterproductive. It, it, it really is. Um. So finding a way that you can enjoy the little things that you do, but just, yeah, moderation. And if we can mix any of them healthier, you know, um, it's, it's something we could look into doing. Um, of course, there are a lot of benefits to healthy eating, you know. Um, we, we've got them there, you know. You, you're talking sort of more energy, um, a healthier heart and healthier organs. Um, your mood links in with your food really well. Yeah. Uh, or, 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 or quite a lot, uh, I, sh- I, sh- I should say. Um, we've all done it where we have a bit of a sugar spike and then a bit of a sugar crash on the other side of it. You know, maybe not when we're feeling our most sociable or our most approachable. Mm. You know, um, definitely not. Um, again, you eat a big greasy meal, you feel maybe a little bit lethargic. You don't have enthusiasm for certain things. You might just want a good old sleep. You know, you might just want to snooze to sort of... Made that sort mistake of, before. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, you never feel better for that, neither do you. It's like a handful of times, not much, but I've had, like, 
McDonald's for lunch or Burger King for lunch. I just thought, you know what, I'll have something like this for lunch, but rarely I do it. But when I do do it, I'm so exhausted afterwards because like usually I have that like around, I'd have that at like a dinner time or something and I usually feel fine. But at lunchtime, I think my body's not used to that much just like grease and I'm just like, it just, I just crash so bad after yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I get you. Like it really does. Um, When I was working in, in, in the factory, we used to have um, take, take away Thursdays we used to do when we were on the back shift because you only did Monday to Thursday because the shift was longer. Yeah, yeah. So the, Thursday was the last one of the week and halfway through, we'd all order something. It'd be a Chinese or it would be a pizza or something like that. Mm-hmm. And the management put a stop to it in the end because Too productivity productivity was just nosediving after yeah, after, I, I, I bet, after It really was like, who wants to sit down for half an hour, eat a pizza, and then go back to work and be pushing like pallets and stillages about and do you know what I mean? Like that sort of thing. And and, and it did. Um, it got to the point where, yeah, management were like, mm, no more of that, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no more of that. And yeah, yeah, I can imagine it. It makes sense. It, it makes sense, you know. You Maybe. feel really hard done by at the time. I, but, uh... <laughs> I was talking to one of my mates that I went to college with the other day, right, and literally bro, like, I, I, I used to eat, when I was a kid, like, you forget how bad that, you used to eat and like literally mates on the, the front street where we went to college it's like pizza deal chinese deal and like for lunchtime i'd get like a slice of pizza and some chips and it would be like three pound or something but i'd eat oh, that like, every day and it's <laughs> so bad or it would be like some like um sweet and sour chicken balls with some rice or some for fried rice and it's like, like yeah. having stuff like that but every day but sausage and chips that was like two pound because all on the front street and that's what everyone used to have but like <laughs> man like, like every day having that for lunch yeah yeah it, and it is so accessible yeah. isn't it like like you say more often than not it's designed to sort of drag you in um you know, I, th- I think it's it's pretty much sort of common knowledge now that companies like a McDonald's and a KFC actually pump the smell out as well. You yeah, know, they, they pump, pump the smell out. In the, oh, them. you know about it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. It gets to the point now where I can see a sign for KFC and my mind can smell KFC. Ah, yeah. Like, because cause you, know, you know it so well and they're so often paired together. And that's that's how they do it. They get into that. It's it's almost subliminal messaging, isn't yeah, it? Kind well, of thing. It's convincing your convincing your consumers and potential customers that they want and, and need your product. Um, and of course, not to mention certain addictive additives, preservatives that maybe go into these things as well. You know, that just makes the cycle a lot harder. Um, it was something that we actually did speak about on Monday again in in the drop in sessions. How it always seems like the healthier options for food are more expensive. But they're not, right? It's, it's, it, that's like a misconception, isn't it? Depends how you do it. If you look at it as a case of, do you know what, I could go and get a Big Mac for two quid or that salad from Sainsbury's pre-packaged and made for me is three quid. Mm-hmm. But that's coming coming back to what we said again. We pay for convenience. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How many salads can you get for get for three three quid or, or maybe it's just a little bit more because you've got to think all oh, you've bought for your money is one burger it doesn't last you long um how many salads can you get out of a fiver if you're buying the lettuce yourself if you're buying maybe it's the frozen chicken yourself or whatever it is that you're going to put in it it might be little bits of tofu certain bits of cheese you know beans lentils that sort of thing um you buy in bulk um and and yeah it's a little bit more of a cost to outlay at the time but you're often getting better savings mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're normally getting better savings. I mean, you go and you buy a big bag of pasta, you've got enough to feed, like, you've got enough to feed a small village, and, and it costs you, what, two and a half, three quid? Yeah. You know? Um, and, and, and yeah, maybe you do get through the till that day, and it's a little bit more expensive than your normal shop would have been, but you might not need another shop next week or, or the next time you would go. So not only are we saving money, you're also cutting down on your to and fro from the shop you know, which is important at the minute, cutting down transmissions and footfall and stuff like that, you know, making sure that we're doing stuff safely. Um, Again, we'd mentioned freezing stuff. You know, you can get big bags of frozen vegetables, frozen fruit that, you know, they they might not be optimal, but remember our aim isn't to be optimal. Our aim is to be better and, and to have progress. You know, if if your options are buy frozen broccoli so I can have it every day or buy a normal broccoli that, I might not even touch it. I might just go in the bin, you know. Um, the, you, you, go on, bud. Brilliant stuff about frozen veg as well. Is you, you can you, you don't have to defrost it. You can just whack it straight in. It's fine. So it's yeah. like it's it's yeah. it's like as easy as it gets, pretty much. 
Yeah, you're going to get a little bit more flexibility with your food, with the freezer as well. You know, you you buy fresh produce. You know, the next two, three, four days, you, it, it needs to be gone. You know, you you might not want to eat all your tomatoes in the next four days. Um, it might be a case of right if I've got something that I can freeze, I can get out as and when I want. You know, we talked about it in in like a, a meal prep sense as well. You know, whereas if you can knock up a few different meals and have them frozen. It's different to having them in the fridge because stuff's only going to last so long in the fridge. You make three meals of chicken and rice. You know that the next three meals you're having a chicken and rice pretty much or the next three three like evening meals maybe. Whereas if you've got a couple of different ones in the freezer and be like, hey, do you know what? I fancy a spag ball today. Pull out a spag ball and, and, and you've got that freedom. It doesn't feel so restrictive. You know, um, the more flexible you, your diet can feel, the easier it is to stick to. It really is, you know. Um, just just before we spin on from this slide and and, and sort of start wrapping up, um, can we think of any drawbacks of eating healthy? Off the off the top off the top of our heads, I feel like any drawbacks though, it's, it's probably the good definitely outweighs it. But um, I mean, yeah, to, well, to be, I don't know actually because I think that there's, there's drawbacks to like being on a fat diet or something. But whether you would 100%. say that, where would you say that was healthy is another thing, isn't it? So that's it because a diet is not intrinsically healthy, is it? So um, exactly, buddy, bang on. You know, um, you might thinking that you're eating healthy. You know, it might, it might not actually be anything to do with your goals. Again, coming back to what I mentioned earlier on, there's eating healthily and there's eating for weight loss or weight gain. You know, you can eat really, really healthily, really, really clean. But if you're still eating 4,000 calories a day and you only need 2,000, you're going to put weight on. Yeah. You know, um, and, and and vice versa. There was there was a guy actually who, he was a, like a sports scientist who lived off, I think it was Twinkies. I'm sure he just lived off tw Twinkies and, <laughs> and certainly Twinkies, junk, that sort of stuff, all of that sort of sugary, sugary crap. And he actually, he lost weight because he was in a calorie deficit. Wow, yeah. He just wasn't eating as many calories as he needed. And yeah, from a nutritional point of view, he was malnourished and he was wrecked. Um, and, oh, and again, there was another guy um, who did the uh, super, super size me. Have you seen yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So that's a really in, that's a really yeah. interesting documentary and this guy he ate nothing but McDonald's for I think 40 days yeah. every every meal every time they said to him um do you want large he had to say yes <laughs> um part of the part of like the, the stipulations and he actually at the end of that was lighter than when he started um which in on paper you know amazing get in I can eat whatever I want and I'm gonna end up lighter no, what had actually happened was um, his condition had dropped so much that he'd lost all of his muscle mass, which is heavier than fat. Uh, he yeah, heavier than fat. So he was bigger, but he weighed less, you know? Um, so, 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 so again, you know, eating healthy isn't always necessarily linked with weight loss, weight gain, anything like that. And like, and like Daniel says, a diet or whatever it is, isn't necessarily um, linked in with being healthy, you know. At the same time, something, even if you are on a healthy diet, what is healthy for one week might not be healthy for six months. You know, you if you're eating the same foods all the time and you get used to the same sort of foods, if, you're, if that weekly plan is deficient in sodium, zinc, protein even, it's not such a big deal across the case of one week if you're getting other stuff in return. But if you maintain that same diet for a month, two months, three months, that thing that you were slightly deficient in after a week is just compounded. And you, and you might actually be starting to see real serious sort of health effects there as well, which is, you know, where this balanced diet comes from. It's not just balancing healthy against unhealthy and proteins against carbs and stuff like that. It's making sure that we're getting a good mix. Yeah. Good, good, good mix of these vitamins and stuff like that. And again, you know, a potential drawback of eating healthy might be the mindset that you get into when you are eating healthy and you think, I don't need a multivitamin. Do you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't need to be doing certain things because I'm eating healthy. And, you know, again, your diet might be healthier than it was. It might not be, it might not be as healthy as it might be and as healthy as you think. So there's definitely that as well. I think it's when you convince yourself you're on a healthy diet, you, you might sort of switch off from it a little bit and just convince that what you're doing is right and is going to work. Yeah. Um, and, You've got to stay engaged with it, you know. Um, so don't get complacent. 
with your with your healthy eating either would be something that I would maybe mention there as well. But yeah, Daniel, like you like you say, buddy, um, the benefits of healthy eating far outweigh the cost, uh, like like uh, the, the drawbacks. So again, you know, more often than not, it's a case of again we all know we should eat five bits of fruit and veg a day. More often than not, we don't. So we sit and have a little bit of a look into into why into why that is, and that's where that self reflection comes in, which is another skill that we sort of looked at the other week. You know, being able to self reflect where you're at right now, where have you come from, where would you like to be, um, and 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 how do you get there? You know, and it only comes from a little bit of honesty with yourself and a, a little bit of self self reflection. Exactly, buddy. Okay, buddy. So just to, just to finish us off, um, we've got we've got um, one more slide to do, and um, just on healthy eating habits and things that we can maybe do to bring things in in place. You know, uh, again, anything that's got a specific number or a quantity on, you don't necessarily need to stick to that. You know, that first one: drink four pints of water each day. Quite ideal, quite idyllic. If you only eat one pint of water a day, move up to one and a half. Go to two, maybe. Gradually build it up. Don't just say, oh four pints of water is the magic amount. Um, I've got to make sure I'm getting that in. And you're going to feel really uncomfortable. You know, you might just retain a lot of water because it's like quite a, quite a quick influx, you know, rather than just 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 slow and steady, you know. Yeah. Um, a healthy eating habit that maybe should be on there um, is just baby steps, you know, slow and steady, make it sustainable, you know. Um, but from a little bit more of a sort of, uh, from a different point of view, you know, we can say looking at limiting processed foods and trying to take out stuff that realistically you look at the ingredients on and you might only know the top three. And then it's just, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? I don't actually know. Whereas if you've bought individual ingredients out. and put them together yourself, you know everything that's in there, exactly. you know, which, which is why a homemade burger or a homemade curry or a homemade pizza can be a lot more healthy than um a takeaway one. Remember, it's not all just about the calorie content. There's there's other stuff going on in there as well. Um, eat eat like like I've just mentioned there. Eating eating your um fruit and veg every day. Um, five a day if you can. Again, if you're in a position at the minute where you're eating zero, try and start on one. Can you move up to two? You know, and just gradually do it that way because if you're all of a sudden trying to shoehorn five bits of fruit and veg into your diet, the places where you don't really know where they fit yet. Um, it's gonna. It might feel a little bit overwhelming. It's gonna be off-putting, you know. Um, then we try not to snack between meals, you know, and and certainly uh, maybe just before bed because it can interfere with your sleeping habits and stuff like that as well. Which again, a vicious cycle. It can knock into the next day. You need the sugary stuff to get you over the energy slump that you've got from not sleeping well, and it just kicks on from there, you know. So being aware of sort of what you're snacking, um, when you're snacking as well. Um, is, is, is really important as well as your portion sizes. Oh, yeah. You know, I've had clients over the years that I've just said to them, just get yourself a smaller plate. And if you pile it up, you're still only getting half the amount of food you'd get on your normal plate. I, you know? a, I had a friend dude who like was like always being like, oh, he's like, my diet's going really well at the moment, right? And then every time you have a meal, man, his plate was piled up like a mountain. And it's like, yeah. man, it's like, right, might be healthy food, but that much of it is not healthy, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, I went to, a, went to a buffet with a mate and, and like you say, just, just load it up. I'm like, mate, you know, you can go back. You know, you know, you, you know, you can go back up. They're not going to stop you. Um, you. You'll be all right. Um, but, 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 but yeah, you know, sometimes we do get into that, that habit. I mean, it might be the way we've been raised, you know, it might just be like, like a mountain of food in front of you and then, and then all, sort of off you go sort of thing. Whereas normally controlling your portion sizes, um, can like I say, give you just a little bit more control, um, and certainly let you, let you track everything a little bit more, you know, again, um, something that we've mentioned in, in the drop-in sessions is maybe it's a plate that comes with either images on that will give you an idea of how much veg you want how much protein how many sort of grains um and some of them actually come with proper divider lips now yeah I've seen as that, well yeah. you know yeah. so you can be like right my tater goes in there my chicken goes in there me, me broccoli or me green beans or whatever it is goes on there sort of uh, i know that i'm relatively all right in terms of portion sizes there you know and it can take out some of the guesswork so that might be something to look into as well if portion sizes is something that you do feel like you struggle with but it'd be interesting to see um even if you just try it try a smaller plate pile it up and see whether your brain's still telling you that you're hungry at the end. Because to your mind, you've still eaten a mountain of food, you know. Um, so, so yeah, maybe, maybe, so maybe give that a go. So we can, we can look at controlling our portion sizes. And then, of course, sort of nail, nail on the head for the whole nutrition thing is just eat a varied diet and try and include a little bit of everything if you can, you know. 
and we've said even probably one of the one of the best diets for weight loss maybe that you might pick up and it might work for you and you might say i'm just going to stick with this forever or until it stops working just got to be aware of other stuff that might be missing from that diet as well you know and and just be again it comes from knowledge and a little bit of flexibility doesn't it it's like okay how do i substitute that for that without increasing the amount of calories massively you know how do i swap how do i swap out okay i've had a lot of broccoli over the last couple of weeks how do i swap that out for a cauliflower or a bit of like squash or something like that you know whatever it is that you're going to go with peppers um how do you make sure that it's still giving you a roundabout what you need in sort of like the whole of your diet as well you know um Bad habits around food, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we could, we could definitely think of, think of plenty. Um, it's definitely something to leave you guys with at home as we sort of wrap up for, the, for not only the day but for the course. You know, just have a little bit of a think. Bad habits that you see other people falling into, maybe bad habits that you might have yourself. It could be to deal with stress. It could be paired eating. It might be associated eating. Like every time I go to the cinema, I get popcorn and a hot dog. You know, um, I, I know I've mentioned that to you, buddy. When we go up to uh, Newcastle to see the Eagles play. Half time. I know I'm getting a hot dog, oh, but I nice, I only maybe I maybe only go once a month. It's yeah. not something that I'm doing every day or, or, I, or even every weekend. You know, maybe it was I think I think it was you that had mentioned um, when you go to the football and and you made to go into the burger van. You know, uh, it, it's like right. I'm at the football burger van. Maybe it's even a couple of pints. You know, it gets to the point where you maybe can't do the event without the food and the stuff that goes with it as well, or you struggle to separate them. So, so again, fall into that sort of associated eating and stuff like that. Um, and, and again, the expectations of other people is probably something that I'd, that I'd, I'd want to mention before we sort of move on. Um, if someone has baked you a cake, I think it's easy to feel obliged to eat it. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's even potentially there and then in front of them, if it's a little cupcake or a little muffin or like, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, there are ways to show appreciation and, um, without necessarily just doing what that person wants you to do. You know, if it's someone who's close enough to you to be baking a cake, maybe they even already know that you're on a diet, you know, yeah. so, to, so to put you in that position is, is potentially a little bit unfair. Um, so that you, you're not obliged to, you don't, you don't have to cave to that necessarily. Um, it's difficult sometimes because at the back of your mind, you really want the cupcake, you know, and it takes a little bit of discipline, but, 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 but again, you know, there's all these bad habits that we can fit into around food and they're more often than not to do with other events, other people, expectations, other pressures, external factors, you know, it's very, very rarely to do with just the food that your body wants. Yeah. You know, so again, coming away from the course, obviously I hope it all sticks and, 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 and I hope it's all stuff that, you know, potentially changes the way that you look at health and well-being and fitness and exercise and nutrition. Um, but it's not something that we ever say a job done with. It's something that we've got to always be constantly sort of thinking about, analysing. Um, and again, making our own mind up with certain things as well. You know, someone who's trying to sell a product to you will swear blind that that is the best product for the thing that you want. You go to someone else who's selling the, the same product for a different company, they'll tell you their product's the same as well. You know, at the, at the end of the day, it's up for you to make your own decisions a little bit. Um, and what advice you're going to follow and what needs or what you need to do for yourself. Totally you know, definitely. Cause at the end of the day, this is your journey. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to be part of it, you know, but it's, it's your journey at the end of the day. I can only guide and give advice. Everybody else can only guide and give advice at the end of the day. You've got to decide what is, what is right for you, you know, and that, that isn't anything that ever, ever, settles you know i think it's always fluctuating you know you might get into one diet uh one eating habit and then it's like it might be right right out of lockdown uh everybody back to work in the office everything back to normal and then your diet might have to change because of that you might not have you might not have your microwave to to, to microwave the dinner that you've been having or you're certainly not gonna have the oven in the back of the car that you've maybe been using for your dinner every day maybe you're getting in later maybe that's something that you've got to think about as well so changes are always going to happen and it's just a case, a case of how we adapt, you know. And, and I think the last year has shown that we can be really resilient um, in a lot of ways in terms of needing to adapt and sort of going forward. We've got to we've got to maintain the same sort of attitude around our own well-being and our own health, you know. But um, yeah, like I said, it, it it has been an absolute pleasure. And um, like it's, as always, if there's anything that you're not so sure about or anything you want to follow up with, um, it's not a case of course done. I can't. 
sort of get in touch with Robert anymore, by all means, drop a, drop an email. I might be able to redirect you to another course that might give you a little bit more information, or I might just be able to just give you a little bit of insight myself, you know. Cool. Right, buddy, that'll about do us then. Week 12 or 12, done and dusted. Fantastic, dude. I've, um, I've put the link to the workout vid and the link to the survey in the chat and they're all both in the description as well if you guys want to have a watch of those um, oh, and, and yeah, do that yeah, survey yeah. as well. Thank you very much, buddy. I've just seen Gary's last comment where he said he's been told these turkey burgers are the biggest weird flex. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah, I, like, I, yeah, man. Um, that's going one step further. That's not just doing your home, like your own burgers. That's like, I'm going to do them right. I'm going to do them turkey mince and that as well, which yeah. I'm, I'm still yet to try myself, actually. I've, I've never done them um, turkey burgers. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to, to giving them a go. It's good. I had a turkey yeah. burger before. They're good, yeah. Yeah, nice, man. Nice. It could be on the cards this week. Um, so other than that, yeah, like 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 you say, um, the the link for the survey is in the chat. Um, if you don't mind just taking 30 seconds to fill it out, you know, um, your, your feedback's really important to us. And, you know, it's, um, it, it, it's handy to know, especially at the end of the course, how you found the full thing, you know, um, sort of as a whole rather than just the day session individually. Um, and, of course, make sure that we um, get those one-to-one -one Zoom meetings booked in to get that presentation done and signed off. You know, we've all put a lot of work in to get to this point. Um, just make sure we get across the finish line with it all. And, um, like I say, just, just get it ticked off, you know, um, dot the I's and cross the T's, so they say. Um, and congratulations, course done, you know, 12, 12 weeks. It's, um, it's, 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 a, it's a big commitment, you know, it's, it's, it's a big, you know, thinking about when this course started, when it was 2020, um, you know, we've, we've, we've done a lot, we've, we've got a lot in and, and, and everybody's come a long way with it, you know. I know that there's been some people that I interact with a little bit more in the chat. There's some people that I'm emailing, you know, that are watching back in their own time. Um, but, but 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 well done everybody you know um, again don't forget that that level 2 accredited course is coming up um, and starting in March so if your name isn't down for that yet and there's something that you're interested in just drop me an email about that as well and we'll get that sorted for you um, Daniel's put the link for the workout video in the description like he says give it a go let us know how you get, how, how you get on um, and keep an eye out for um, any, any new ones of those popping up on the channel as well because that's something that we're going to do eventually, just get some new ones up and uh, have them in their own playlist as well. So, yeah, plenty to look forward to. We are we are, we are done, but um, certainly not job done. You know, like I say, we're always learning, we're always adapting, and there's always more, more to dig into. So I'll hopefully catch you guys down the line on a, another course in the future. Uh, right, buddy, I reckon that'll about do us then, mate. Um, oh, thank you very, very much for your help today. Um, Gary's just saying, see you later. See you later, guys. Have, have a good week, mate. Um, I'll hopefully catch you in the drop-ins Monday morning. Um, if you're curious about the drop-ins and it is something that you'd like to, um, again, just ask, ask a couple of questions about, figure out um, what we're doing um, on a Monday morning because that's when it runs, Monday morning, 10 o'clock. Um, again, just, just get in touch and I'll give you a little bit of information on that. Um, but other, other than that, um, I hope you all have a good week. Uh, stay safe, take care of yourself and I'll, um, I'll see you later. See you later guys.